This is the fifth part of the novel. For other parts, please refer to the description of this video or the video list on the channel. The poplar tree was unexpectedly blocked by Lin Dong? Everyone was incredulous. With Lin Dong's height of 1 meter 80 and weight of over 100 kilograms, he actually directly blocked the nearly 2 meter tall, 267 kilograms poplar tree? This is simply overturning everyone's imagination. Poplar tree lay on the ground feeling a bit confused. Being blocked is one thing, but being directly blocked and sent flying. He had lost face and couldn't bring himself to get up. Huang Junlang beside him also widened his eyes, his face full of astonishment. The deafening cheers rang throughout the venue. Following the piano prince, Lin Dong has gained a new title. Basketball Prince. The next ball was already without suspense. After Lin Dong stole the ball, he elegantly turned his back to the basket and made a back toss. The basketball hollowly entered the net Lin Dong's team 11,8 Huang Junlang's team. Lin Dong shoots without even looking at the basket? This is simply a bit too much. A total of four three-pointers were shot in the game, one tomahawk dunk, all of them went in. The most difficult to understand is, why didn't he look at the basket for the last three-pointer? The game ended. Lin Dong's name once again resounded throughout Changda. That evening, Huang Junlang set up a table of the lowest-priced dishes at the Golden Leaf Hotel as promised. Lin Dong and the others didn't mind, as long as there was food. The next day at noon, three shots of I am a vegetable in the broadcasting room sparked laughter from the entire school. Huang Junlang's face was completely lost, of course, he became even more resentful towards Lin Dong, constantly thinking about how to retaliate against him. The following days were very ordinary, and in the blink of an eye, two more days passed. This weekend, Lin Dong promised to accompany Sun Si back home since it was a promise, Lin Dong wouldn't break it. Thursday. Lin Dong was in class. Received a text message from Han Shiryun. Han Shiryun, Lin Dong, do you have time tomorrow? I want to invite you to dinner. Lin Dong thought for a moment, there was nothing else to do, so why not? It wouldn't be polite to refuse the invitation of a goddess. So he replied, okay. Tell me the location, I'll be there tomorrow. Han Shiryun, it's a deal. No backing out. I'll tell you the location tomorrow. Lin Dong, okay. The next day, Lin Dong received a call from Han Shiryun, asking him to go to a restaurant next to the Splendid Sands. As the largest entertainment venue in Jiangchang, there were no shortage of restaurants surrounding it. After dinner, they could go straight to entertainment, how convenient. Lin Dong drove his Bugatti to the Splendid Sands and parked the car at the entrance. When he arrived at the restaurant, he realized there were quite a lot of people. Three large tables in total at least over 20 people. Even Huang Junlang and his group of dandies were there. Lin Dong. I just treated you to a good meal a few days ago, why are you here again today to freeload off food and drinks? Huang Junlang wouldn't miss any opportunity to taunt Lin Dong. Huang Junlang, are you still not over losing a few days ago? If you're not satisfied, let's schedule another match sometime. Lin Dong, this isn't school, who's competing with you in basketball? Besides, today is Shiryun's birthday, you didn't even bring a gift. Are you here to freeload off food and drinks? Huang Junlang, you're damn right. Are you still not over losing a few days ago? If you're not satisfied, let's schedule another match sometime. Lin Dong, this isn't school, who's competing with you in basketball? Besides, today is Shiryun's birthday, you didn't even bring a gift, are you here to freeload off food and drinks? Lin Dong hadn't realized that today was actually Han Shiryun's birthday if he had known earlier, he wouldn't have come, mainly because he didn't like being around people like Huang Junlang. And he basically didn't know these people. Alright, you two, stop it. Today is my birthday, so you should listen to me. Let's all sit down and have a good meal. Han Shiryun spoke up, and Huang Junlang didn't continue to taunt Lin Dong. Thank you all for coming to my birthday banquet today. Everyone sitting here are my best friends. Thank you for taking care of me during these days at Jiangda. I'll drink first to show my appreciation. After Han Shiryun finished speaking, she raised her glass and drank all the beer in one go. Everyone present also picked up their glasses and drank a toast. Let's eat, once we're full, we'll have some entertainment tonight however, this meal made Huang Junlang extremely furious. As one of the rising stars of Jiangda, Lin Dong naturally received a lot of attention from girls. Frequently, girls came over to toast him, and Lin Dong naturally couldn't refuse, accepting all of them. 
But it was strange, Lin Dong's alcohol tolerance used to be very poor, just two bottles of beer and he'd be down, not to mention hard liquor, he could hardly handle it. But today he drank so much and didn't feel a thing. Could it be that his constitution had improved? Is he immune to alcohol now? After dinner, Huang Julang and Zhang Yun, Han Shiryun's two bodyguards, led everyone to a private room at the Splendid Sands. This was arranged in advance. Lin Dong originally wanted to slip away, but he was specially looked after by Han Shiryun and had no chance. Entering the private room, the first thing that caught the eye was a 21-layer tall cake, as tall as a person. Because today happened to be Han Shiryun's 21st birthday wow. Such a big birthday cake, it's my first time seeing it. So romantic. Many girls exclaimed. How about it, Shiryun? This cake was personally ordered by me. Huang Junlang asked. Thank you, Junlang. Han Shiryun said gratefully. And me, this private room was quite a hassle to book. The Splendid Sands is the best entertainment venue in Jiangcheng. Without connections, you can't book such a big private room. Another bodyguard, Zheng Yong, boasted. Thank you too. Big brother Yong. Han Shiryun also quickly thanked him. Let's make a wish quickly. Han Shiryun closed her eyes and began to make a wish. Because everyone had just eaten. After making the wish, she pushed the cake aside and waited for everyone to get hungry again before eating. At this time, Huang Junlang took out a box from his pocket and handed it to Han Shiryun, saying, Shiryun, today is your birthday, I prepared a simple gift for you, I hope you'll accept it. Han Shiryun took the box Shiryun, quickly open it and see what gift Huang Dasha has given you? Yes, open it. We're all curious about what Huang Dasha would give us someone of his status? Under the urging of several girls, Han Shiryun opened the box. Inside the box lay a quiet crystal necklace. Shiryun, this crystal necklace was carefully selected by me, do you like it? Huang Junlang said. Han Shiryun took out the crystal necklace, and a receipt fell out of the box. This was intentional by Huang Junlang, he wanted everyone to see the value of this crystal necklace, making them envy and jealous. Wow! This crystal necklace actually costs 280,000? Isn't that too expensive? Let me see, let me see. Wow, it's true. Huang Dasha is so generous. Casually giving a necklace worth over 200,000, most of the people present were stunned. Huang Junlang felt somewhat proud. This time he really went all out, Zhang Shan has been ignoring him these past few days, buying many things couldn't win her over in the end, Huang Junlang also got a little angry, directly giving Zhang Shan 50,000 yuan, asking her to take care of the child herself, and the two bid farewell. After all, he's about had enough of playing, once the novelty wears off it's time to look for new targets. Now, he set his sights on Han Shiryun again, this flower, everyone can smell the fragrance, but no one can pick it, making him somewhat itchy. And he has spent several million on Han Shiryun before, he definitely can't just give up like this, he must take Han Shiryun down again. Several million is not a small amount for a rich second generation like him, to the point where he's been tight on cash recently, finding several excuses to get money from his parents. At this moment, Zhang Yang said, Huang Daxian, isn't giving a necklace a bit low? Shiryun, come, see the gift I've given you. After Zhang Yong finished speaking, he also handed a beautifully wrapped box to Han Shiryun. Han Shiryun opened the box, only to find a set of BMW car keys lying inside. This? Directly giving a car? Han Shiryun's roommates and classmates were almost driven mad with envy. If this car were given to them, they'd probably end up in bed together tonight. Shiryun, last time the car I gave you wasn't to your liking, so this time I've got a better one for you, a BMW Z4 convertible, definitely much better looking than the last one. Huang Junlang, who was beside him, was overshadowed by Zhang Yang's move, angrily saying, Second Yang, what did you say last time? After taking my three million, you swore never to compete with me for Han Shiryun again, aren't you just talking nonsense? Huang Junlang directly brought up the incident of their competition and the agreement they made. What? Zhang Yang actually took 3 million from Huang Junlang? And then promised not to pursue Han Shiryun again? Is this even possible? Isn't he a rich second generation? Why would he take money from Huang Junlang in this way? It seems he's just a fake rich second generation Huang Junlang is more impressive in comparison. The surrounding discussions made Zhang Yang's face alternately pale and red. He hadn't expected Huang Junlang to bring up this matter, making him feel somewhat embarrassed. Huang Daxian, dare you mention the competition from last time? 
It was because you were afraid you couldn't beat me, so you proactively gave me 3 million. In the end, even though I withdrew, you didn't even get first place, it's simply too embarrassing. Zheng Yang retorted. But you also took the money, as a man, you should keep your promises, unless you admit you're not a man. I did promise not to compete with you for Han Shiryun, but now if I don't make a move, Han Shiryun will be taken by Lin Dong, the loser, have you not seen them going out for dinner together? This can only be blamed on your own incompetence, I'm competing with Lin Dong, not you, you're not even considered a rival Wang Julang was left speechless by the retort. Lin Dong was a bit confused, what's this got to do with me? Isn't this pointing fingers at me? He could tell. These two are of the same kind. Alright, stop arguing, today is my birthday, can you guys give me some face? Han Shiryun said. Han Shiryun spoke up. The two of them stopped quarreling. Then Han Shiryun continued, first of all, thank you for coming today, but the gifts you two gave are too precious, I can't accept them. Please take them back. I'm sorry. Shiryun, I sincerely gave it to you, don't feel burdened. Me too. The two of them quickly replied listen to me, I invited you guys here today not to receive gifts, but to thank you for taking care of me, and also to clarify something with you. Actually, I already have someone I like. So please don't send me anything in the future, let's just be ordinary friends, okay? Han Shiryun gathered her courage to say. This was the result of her careful consideration. During the last competition, Lin Dong and Huang Junlang together spent over 10 million on gifts for her. She received over 7 million in total, and she used that money to buy a new house for her family, bought a car for her parents, and gave her parents 1 million yuan. She had 3 million left for herself, and her original wish was to let her parents have a better life, but she didn't expect it to come true so quickly. So now she doesn't have much desire for money, and she doesn't want to wander between Huang Junlang and Zhang Yang anymore. One who often walks by the river will get their shoes wet, and she's also afraid that one day they'll come to her for settlement after all, she's just an ordinary girl from an ordinary family, if the other party really insists, she won't be able to resist. So today, she directly clarified things on her birthday, and also showed it to Lin Dong. The person she mentioned is someone she likes is Lin Dong. Shiryun, are you joking? Huang Junlang asked dumbfoundedly. Shiryun, don't joke like this, my heart can't take this kind of blow. Zhang Yong also said. Obviously, they both can't accept this reality for now. The bystanders were utterly astonished when Han Shiryun refused the hundreds of thousands in gifts from Huang Junlang and Zhang Yong, opting instead to draw a clear boundary between them. Is Han Shiryun out of her mind? With such powerful protectors by her side, countless girls at the school envied her deeply. I am not joking with you. Everything I said is true. Can't we just be ordinary friends? Han Shiryun spoke softly Huang Junlang and Zhang Yang exchanged a glance, each seeing the resentment in the other's eyes. Since Han Shiryun spoke out in front of so many people, it was undoubtedly not a mere jest. Now they understood. They were just two backups, two sycophants, who had been licking Han Shiryun's boots for so long, only to be outdone by someone else. Zhang Yang was slightly better off, having been at a disadvantage in his competition with Huang Junlang and not having spent much money. But it was different for Huang Junlang. He had spent millions, and now that money seemed to be going down the drain. Huang Junlang was burning with anger for a moment, his face contorting with rage. Han Shiryun, who is that man you mentioned? I'll go and take care of him. Huang Junlang demanded furiously. Junlang, can't you behave differently? Can't we just be good friends? Han Shiryun pleaded. She was afraid that Huang Junlang would continue to pester her, and she also knew she was in the wrong others had spent so much money on her and now she wanted to kick them away. Han Shiryun, don't try to deceive me. Let me tell you, I've spent so much money on you. Now that you want to kick me away, no way. Then how would you be willing to let me go? Han Shiryun asked. To let you go, fine. Accompany me for a month, and I'll let you go. Impossible. Han Shiryun answered without hesitation. Then there's nothing more to say. Let me tell you, Han Shiryun, in this city, you won't escape from my grasp. I must have you. I, Huang Junlang, have never failed to get the woman I want. Huang Junlang's face contorted as he spoke harshly to Han Shiryun. Since the situation had escalated, Huang Junlang no longer pretended, revealing his true nature. And me. Han Shiryun, since you've acted so heartlessly, don't blame us. I've also spent a lot on you these days. 
If you want to completely get rid of me, you'll have to accompany me for at least half a month otherwise, I'll join forces with Huang Daxian, and you'll have no place to stand in this city anymore. Zheng Yang interjected. Han Shiryun stood helplessly in place. She had thought things wouldn't be resolved so easily, but she hadn't expected Huang Junlang and Zhang Yang to say such things. The people around also began to feel that something was amiss. They were all friends of Han Shiryun, naturally siding with her. Huang Junlang, Zhang Yang, what are you trying to do? Let me tell you, you better not mess around. Otherwise, we'll report you. One of Han Shiryun's roommates spoke up. Yes, you better not mess around. We'll report to the school, and you'll be expelled. Someone chimed in. Get lost. None of your business. Otherwise, I'll deal with all of you together. Huang Junlang shouted loudly at the girl who had just spoken. The girl was also startled, not expecting Huang Junlang to suddenly become like another person she was also a little afraid to speak anymore. Huang Junlang and Zhang Yang were the local rich second generation in the city. At this moment, Han Shiryun began to sob, after all, she was just a girl, threatened like this, tears uncontrollably streaming down her face. Han Shiryun, your tears are useless. If you want to resolve this matter, you must accompany us for a month and a half. After that, we promise not to bother you again. Otherwise, you'll find it hard to move an inch in this city. Think about it carefully. Huang Junlang continued to threaten. Han Shiryun looked tearfully at Lin Dong. Now only Lin Dong could save her. She knew something about Lin Dong's background. The behind-the-scenes boss of the Golden Leaf Hotel was no ordinary person. At least Huang Junlang and Zhang Yang's families couldn't compare. Lin Dong also couldn't stand it anymore. You too, threatening a woman like this, isn't it a bit too much? Lin Dong said lightly that actions of these two rich second generations reminded him of his cousin Wang Li's situation in the city by the lake. If no one helped Han Shiryun today, her fate might not be good. Lin Dong, this is none of your business here. It's best you don't speak. Wanting to play the hero to save the beauty, you don't have that ability yet. Huang Junlang said to Lin Dong. Being a hero to save the beauty is not the point, but I really can't stand it anymore. Lin Dong was about to speak. The door of the private room was pushed open a crack. A small head poked in, glanced at the situation inside the room, and only after seeing Lin Dong did she push the door open and walk in. Lin Dong, so you're here. I just saw your car outside, and I knew you must be here. I searched through so many private rooms before finding you. A girl with an explosion-style haircut, big earrings, and heavy makeup on her face walked in and said. Behind her were five or six similarly dressed people, all around 16 or 17 years old Xiao Xiao, who was this? It took you so long to find him. One of the people behind Lu Xiao Xiao asked. This is my brother. Lu Xiao Xiao said. Your brother? Why didn't I know you had such a brother? You don't know. Anyway, he's almost like a real brother to me. While the two were still talking here, Huang Junlang couldn't take it anymore. A few little girls came out of nowhere. Where did these smelly girls come from? Who let you in? Get out! Huang Junlang shouted. Lu Xiaoxiao was confused, pointing at her own nose with her index finger, and asked, Are you talking about me? Who else would I be talking about? Get out of here! Or I'll teach you a lesson for your family. Don't you recognize me? Lu Xiaoxiao asked curiously. Who are you? I want to know you. If I knew someone like you, I would have dealt with you long ago. Look at you, at such a young age, what kind of attire is this? You dress like a thug how were you brought up by your parents? Or were you raised without any upbringing? Huang Junlang sneered. Lu Xiaoxiao looked at Lin Dong and asked, Brother Lin Dong, is this your friend? No. Lin Dong replied simply. Well, that's easy then. Lu Xiaoxiao said. Then she turned to Huang Junlang and asked, You're quite impressive. What's your name? Lu Xiaoxiao originally wanted to say you're quite awesome, but she thought of Lin Dong being present, so she changed her words. What's my name? You're not worthy to know. I haven't even asked for your name yet. What's my name? Someone tell him. Lu Xiaoxiao said. A person walked out from behind Lu Xiaoxiao and pointed at her, saying, She's Lu Xiaoxiao, the second miss of the Lu family in Jiangcheng. Do you know about the Lu family in Jiangcheng? Hmm, Jiangcheng probably only has one Lu family. 
After this person finished speaking, they returned to their original position and, along with the others, looked at Huang Junlang with a mocking expression daring to insult the second miss of the Lu family? This is going to be interesting. Lu Xiao Xiao? The second miss of the Lu family in Zhongcheng? Zheng Yang's mind buzzed. He was the first to react. Originally standing with Huang Junlang, he quickly stepped back and stood among the crowd. Huang Junlang wanted to die. He didn't want to. What kind of existence was the Lu family in Zhongcheng? That was a top-tier powerhouse in Zhongcheng. His family background was nothing compared to theirs. He had heard that there was a second miss in the Lu family in Zhongcheng, a demoness. She must be the little girl in front of him now now he felt a little jittery. He had almost spoken up to support Huang Junling just now. If those words had been spoken, he wouldn't even know how he'd end up dead. Huang Junlang was initially a little confused. Gradually, a look of fear, dread, and terror appeared on his calm face. The second miss of the Lu family in Zhongcheng? Wasn't that the legendary demoness of Zhongcheng? What had he just said? He had actually wanted to discipline her on behalf of her parents? And saying she was raised without any upbringing? Huang Junlang suddenly felt his blood pressure rise, feeling dizzy. Why aren't you speaking? Aren't you going to discipline me on behalf of my parents? And saying I was raised without any upbringing? Lu Xiaoxiao asked. Huang Junlang was so scared that he knelt down on the ground, banging his head as he trembled, Miss Lu, I'm sorry. I was blind. I offended you. Please forgive me this time. Wasn't he quite powerful just now? Why couldn't he speak clearly now? This scene left all the uninformed people present a little confused. Just now, Huang Junlang was still majestic, but now he was scared into kneeling on the ground? Who was this little girl in front of them? Just one name scared Huang Junlang like this? The key point was that this little girl had just called Lin Dong brother? Everyone present was shocked by Lu Xiaoxiao, dressed in such a strange way someone who could scare Huang Junlang like this with just a name was definitely not a simple person. Brother Lin Dong, what's his name? Lu Xiaoxiao asked Lin Dong. He's called Huang Junlang. His family seems to be from Jiangcheng. Should be quite powerful, a real rich second generation. Lin Dong replied with a smile. Offending Lu Xiaoxiao, he didn't need to take action Wang Junlang was definitely finished. Rich second generation? Lu Xiaoxiao asked in confusion. Then she turned to the sisters behind her and asked, Do you know anyone surnamed Huang in our circle? Don't know. Don't know. Don't recognize. Never heard of it. Several little girls shook their heads simultaneously. Lu Xiaoxiao looked at Huang Junlang and said, You haven't even entered the circle of Jiangcheng, what kind of rich second generation are you? Huang Junlang knelt on the ground and quickly replied, Yes, yes, Miss Lu is right. I'm not a rich second generation, I'm just an ordinary person. Please have mercy, Miss. Want me to spare you? Do you know? Since I was little, I've never been scolded like this by anyone. You want to discipline me on behalf of my parents? Saying I was raised without any upbringing? Want me to leave? Neither my grandfather, nor my parents, nor my brother has ever said such things to me. Lu Xiaoxiao said angrily, It's my fault, I have a foul mouth. I'm sorry to you. Huang Junlang began to slap himself in the face. At this moment, he was truly afraid. If the Lu family targeted him in Jiangcheng, his good days would be over. He would definitely be bankrupt in minutes, and everything he was proud of would vanish into thin air. Han Shiryun stopped crying, looking at this scene in amazement, and glanced at Lu Xiaoxiao and Lin Dong. She knew that today's crisis had been averted. Huang Junlang had provoked a big shot and was already in deep water. He didn't have time to deal with her anymore, but it was a pity that Zheng Yong had escaped. Zheng Yong quietly wiped the sweat off his forehead, feeling how perilous it was. He almost followed Huang Junlang's lead just now. Fortunately, he reacted quickly. Although Huang Junlang knelt on the ground and slapped himself, his actions did not alleviate Lu Xiaoxiao's anger. Sisters, get him. Beat him. Lu Xiaoxiao rushed up with a few sisters and punched and kicked Huang Junlang. Huang Junlang could only passively endure the beating. He dared not fight back or even dodge. However, Lu Xiaoxiao and her sisters were still girls, young in age, and weak in strength. Their blows didn't cause any substantial harm to Huang Junlang. But Huang Junlang's cries were as miserable as could be. 
He hoped that after these young ladies beat him and saw how pitiful he was, they would spare him. After being hit a few times by Lu Xiaoxiao, her hands hurt, but she still felt unsatisfied. She looked around. Directly walking to the central tea table in the private room, Lu Xiaoxiao picked up a bottle of wine and prepared to smash it on Huang Junling's head. Cease, exclaimed Lin Dong. What are you attempting, Lu Xiaoxiao? The bottle was filled with liquor, and moreover, it was quite thick. If that bottle were to come crashing down, Huang Junlang would likely lose half his life. For Lu Xiaoxiao to dare such actions at such a tender age, what will become of her in the future? It would suffice to vent one's frustration with a few blows, aiming to draw blood is rather excessive Lu Xiaoxiao was just about to act. Upon hearing Lin Dong's shout, she had no choice but to pause, turning to him and saying, Brother Lin Dong, he just insulted me, and I wish to retaliate. A couple of insults and you immediately grab a bottle to smash over someone's head? Do you comprehend the consequences of such an action? Sometimes, violence is not the solution. Quickly, set down the bottle. Reluctantly, Lu Xiaoxiao placed the bottle down. Furthermore, henceforth, you are forbidden from frequenting such places during study time. Look at yourself, do you resemble a student at all? If I catch you behaving like this again, I will personally discipline you on behalf of your brother. Lin Dong felt discomfort seeing Lu Xiaoxiao's attire. A perfectly good student, yet she dressed in such a manner, it was truly an eyesore if his younger sister behaved like this every day, she would have been disciplined long ago. He wondered why Lu Chun didn't intervene. As Lin Dong spoke, everyone present was astonished. Just a moment ago, Huang Junlang threatened to discipline Lu Xiaoxiao's parents, and now he was kneeling on the ground. Lin Dong had just mentioned disciplining Lu Xiaoxiao's brother? Even Lu Xiaoxiao's friends looked at Lin Dong mockingly. Why were there so many people today wanting to discipline Lu Xiaoxiao? They were anticipating a storm from her. However, Lu Xiaoxiao simply lowered her head and, with a somewhat aggrieved tone, said, Oh, I understand, Brother Lin Dong. In an instant, their expressions shifted from mockery to shock. When did this mischievous troublemaker from the Lu family become so obedient? Even within the Lu family, Lu Xiaoxiao had never heard anyone speak to her like this before. Although Lu Xiaoxiao sounded somewhat aggrieved at this moment, she was actually quite pleased ever since Lin Dong appeared suddenly by her side last time, holding Qin Zhang's sword aimed at her chest with just two fingers, Lin Dong's figure had been elevated infinitely in her heart, surpassing even her brother Lu Chen. In times of despair, it is often the figures that appear suddenly that are most easily remembered. Moreover, as a member of the SCC, she naturally understood the weight of the eight titans of the Tea Party. Even her brother was no match, so if Lin Dong could defeat Qin Zhang, he was undoubtedly powerful. Lu Xiaoxiao admired strength. Furthermore, he was a strong figure who had saved her life. When Lin Dong spoke to her like this, she was actually quite pleased because it proved that Lin Dong still cared about her. Following this, Lu Xiaoxiao asked, Um, brother Lin Dong, can I come during my vacation? You may come during your vacation, but you must rid yourself of that explosive hairstyle, large earrings, and the heavy makeup on your face a student should look like a student. Very well. Oh, brother Lin Dong, when will you be available? My grandfather wishes to meet you and express his gratitude. Lin Dong pondered for a moment before replying, it may not be possible this week. I'll contact your brother when I have time. The Lu family's reputation must be maintained, but it will have to wait until next week. All right, brother Lin Dong, we shall take our leave for now. Lu Xiaoxiao bid farewell to her companions and prepared to depart. However, as she was leaving, she said to Huang Junlang, Huang Junlang, isn't it? I'll remember you. I hope you can continue playing the role of the rich second generation tomorrow. Huang Junlang was directly frightened into sitting on the ground. It's over, everything is over having successfully provoked the anger of the Lu family, how can his family continue to thrive in Jiangcheng? He dared not imagine what kind of life awaited him once his family went bankrupt. Lu Xiaoxiao left with her entourage. The private room was now empty, with only those who had dined together remaining. Huang Junlang sat slumped on the ground, his eyes devoid of spirit. Zhang Yong, on the other hand, secretly rejoiced. Han Shiryun gazed at Lin Dong with admiration in her beautiful eyes. And it wasn't just Han Shiryun. The girls in the room all looked at Lin Dong with admiration. Who would have thought that Lin Dong was such a big shot? He was truly a hidden dragon. Lin Dong felt somewhat embarrassed under the scrutiny of these predatory gazes. Um, Miss Han, I have some matters to attend to, so I'll take my leave. You all continue having fun. 
Lin Dong said. Han Shiryun, upon hearing that Lin Dong wanted to leave, naturally disagreed. She walked over and hugged Lin Dong's arm, saying, Lin Dong, you can't leave today is my birthday, and you haven't given me a gift yet. Lin Dong felt embarrassed as Han Shiryun hugged his arm tightly. He could feel Han Shiryun's softness and wanted to break free, but Han Shiryun held on tightly, giving him no chance. Um, Miss Han, can I make it up to you next time? I truly didn't know it was your birthday today. No, you must give it today. Han Shiryun clung tightly to Lin Dong's arm. As she spoke, she intentionally rubbed Lin Dong's arm against her majestic chest a couple of times, causing Lin Dong's face to turn red. Although he had been dating Jiang Shan for a few years, he was still inexperienced, how could he endure the provocation of a girl like Han Shiryun? Several bold girls also ran over and surrounded Lin Dong, pulling and tugging at him, all wanting to get closer to him. In the end, Lin Dong had no choice but to agree to stay temporarily. Because Huang Junlang was still in the private room, and they had moved to another room, continuing to have fun Zheng Yang and the other boys didn't dare to go, and now that they saw Lin Dong, they were somewhat afraid and just wanted to leave quickly to avoid ending up like Huang Junlang. It wasn't until nearly midnight that they finally finished. When Han Shiryun went to pay the bill, she was informed that all of Lin Dong's expenses at the luxurious Golden Sands were waived. This caused everyone to exclaim in amazement once again. Lin Dong's identity was too mysterious. How had they not noticed such a big shot before? Lin Dong, where do you live? asked Han Shiryun as they arrived at the entrance of the Golden Sands. I live off campus, Lin Dong replied. Lin Dong, didn't you drive here? Can you give us a ride? It's not safe for us to take a taxi this late, a girl said. Yeah, give us a ride to the school. We'll squeeze in. Otherwise, how are we going to get back? Another girl chimed in. My car can't accommodate so many people, Lin Dong replied there were still about 10 girls left, and indeed, Lin Dong's car couldn't fit them all. It could only accommodate one person. We can squeeze in, you can make a couple of trips. Otherwise, how are we going to get back, one of the girls suggested. Yeah. As they approached Lin Dong's Bugatti Veyron, Lin Dong patted the car and said, this is my car. If I were to take you all, I'd have to make 10 trips. Seeing the dazzling Bugatti Veyron in front of them, everyone was mesmerized. It was truly stunning. Indeed, women had little resistance to such a super luxury car. Wow. Lin Dong, is this your car? It's gorgeous. This is a divine car. Forget about Huang Junlang, Zhang Yang, and the like. The cars they drive are all so low. What's this car called again? Look it up quickly. The Bugatti Veyron, a globally limited edition sports car, was indeed impressive. Everyone took out their phones to search. Wow! This is the Bugatti Veyron, a globally limited edition the official price is 66 million, one of the girls who searched exclaimed with a stutter. 66 million was astronomical for students like them. Even for rich second generation like Zheng Yang and Huang Junlang, a car worth 66 million would only evoke sighs of admiration. Sorry. I won't be able to take you tonight. You can take a taxi back yourselves. I can reimburse the fare. Goodbye. After saying this, Lin Dong unlocked his car, opened the door, got in, and prepared to leave. He had been surrounded by a group of coquettes all night, and he was starting to feel overwhelmed. After all, he was just a normal man. Being occasionally touched by these girls made him feel uncomfortable. As he settled in, the passenger door opened, and Han Shiryun got in. Now was not the time to be polite. If she wanted to win over Lin Dong, she had to seize every opportunity to spend time with him. As Han Shiryun got into the front passenger seat, the other girls outside felt irritated why didn't they think of sitting in the front passenger seat? What a great opportunity! Not only could they ride in such a nice car, but they could also spend time alone with Lin Dong. Lin Dong was taken aback and said, Han Shiryun, I'm not going back to school. Lin Dong, you can take me anywhere. I'm going with you tonight, Han Shiryun said. Anywhere? This made Lin Dong start to speculate. Could he take her to a hotel? Lin Dong glanced at Han Shiryun, only to see her looking at him with a slight blush on her face. To be honest, if Lin Dong claimed to be indifferent to a goddess like Han Shiryun, it would be a complete lie. As one of the three goddesses of Jiang University, Han Shiryun had her merits. In terms of appearance, figure, and enthusiasm, she was top-notch. If she made a move, there were probably not many men who could resist. However, Lin Dong was different. 
He had his principles, unlike animals like Huang Junlang, who only thought with their lower half otherwise, he wouldn't have been with Jiang Shan for four years, completely respecting her wishes and not touching her. Han Shiryun, that's not appropriate. There's nothing wrong. Last time, you snatched my first place, so I should be yours now. If Huang Junlang had snatched it, I would have definitely had no chance, so I should thank you, Han Shiryun said bluntly. This made Lin Dong unsure how to respond. Um, Han Shiryun, I think if two people are going to do that, they should cultivate feelings first. Otherwise, what's the difference between us and animals? Don't you think so? Aren't humans just animals? You men are all animals who think with your lower half. Han Shiryun retorted. Han Shiryun, I disagree with that. I'm not the same as those men, am I? Lin Dong said firmly. Han Shiryun looked at Lin Dong with a smile that wasn't a smile and said, Are you really different? Or is it that you can't? This was unbearable. This Han Shiryun. You're insulting my integrity take back what you just said. I'll pretend nothing happened, or else you'll regret it tonight. Lin Dong's tone changed, feeling insulted. Lin Dong, I just want to see if you really can't do it. Or if you've been wrongly accused? I'm just trying to clear your name. Han Shiryun insisted. Her goal tonight was to provoke Lin Dong, so naturally, she wouldn't back down. You said it yourself. Don't regret it. After saying this, Lin Dong ignited the engine, stepped on the gas, and disappeared from everyone's sight. The soundproofing effect of the 66 million sports car was surprisingly good. They couldn't hear a word of their conversation outside. She only then realized that Lin Dong was actually a super rich second generation perhaps several times more upscale than someone like Huang Junlang. However, what truly captivated her was not solely Lin Dong's status as a super-rich second generation though she harbored aspirations for wealth, her desires were limited to improving her family's life, rather than being a purely materialistic woman. It was Lin Dong's ability to spend four years with Jiang Shan without touching her, his ability to write such outstanding songs with his profound love, and his perennially serene demeanor that truly drew her in. She often navigated among the second generation wealthy, and she had her own understanding of men. Men like Huang Junlang pursued her solely for novelty and the sense of accomplishment in conquering one of Jiang Da's three goddesses, to become an object of envy for everyone. Perhaps after obtaining her, with time, when the novelty wore off, he would want to conquer Su Xu and Shang Wan Mingyue, too. Such men would never be satisfied. But a man like Lin Dong would not be like that. As long as there was a substantive relationship with him, he would absolutely take responsibility to the end. Moreover, as Lin Dong's status and talent gradually became exposed, there would undoubtedly be more and more girls pursuing him, so she had to act quickly. Hence, the scene tonight where she took the initiative. Lin Dong remained silent and slowly drove into the residential area. He was nervous too, his hands gripping the steering wheel slightly sweaty. After parking the car, they went upstairs together. Neither of them spoke along the way indicating that both were indeed nervous. Upon entering the room, Han Shiryun was not even in the mood to admire the luxury of the room. If it were usual, she would definitely be speechless with shock. Of course, now she couldn't speak either, but it was out of nervousness rather than all. Han Shiryun sat stiffly on the sofa. Lin Dong stood beside her, unsure of what to say. Ah, uh, Han classmate, would you like to take a shower first? Lin Dong asked cautiously ah, uh, Oh, all right. Han Shiryun stood up nervously, ready to take a shower. But since it was her first time here, she didn't know where the bathroom was and felt too embarrassed to ask, so she just stood in place. Um, the bathroom is over there. Lin Dong pointed in a direction. Blushing, Han Shiryun hurriedly ran over, opened the bathroom door, and locked it tightly from the inside. After Han Shiryun went to take a shower, Lin Dong sat on the sofa, his nervousness still unresolved. So, he took out his phone, intending to play a game and calm down. As he opened his phone, he saw seven or eight missed calls in a row. Lin Dong quickly checked and found that his cousin Wang Li had been calling him since 8 o'clock. He didn't know when his phone had been muted, probably in such a noisy environment as the luxurious Venetian, he hadn't noticed. Lin Dong's heart tightened. Could it be that something dangerous had happened again like last time? He hurriedly returned the call soon Wang Li's voice came through the phone. Hey, brother Lin Dong. Lin Dong felt slightly relieved hearing Wang Li's voice. Wang Xiaomei, why have you been calling me? What's wrong? My phone was muted, I didn't hear. Lin Dong asked. Brother Lin Dong, my my mom got beaten up. What? 
and he got beaten? If Lin Dong were to rank the people he cared most about in this world, excluding his parents who were no longer alive, his aunt Lu Yenmei would definitely be at the top, tied with his eldest aunt Lin Guoying. Since his parents had passed away in an accident, he had only felt the warmth of home at his aunt's and eldest aunt's homes. And now his aunt was beaten up? Lin Dong's anger flared up instantly. From what he knew about his aunt, she would never provoke anyone. Who beat her? Is she badly hurt? Lin Dong asked hurriedly. It was your cousin Lin Quan who beat her. The injuries aren't very serious, the doctor said she should be fine after resting for a few days, Wang Li replied, how could Lin Quan beat Auntie? Did Auntie go to demand that compensation money for me again? Oh, brother Lin Dong, I can't explain it all in a few words on the phone, hurry back and see. My brother is getting ready to avenge her tomorrow. Lin Dong was furious. Although Wang Li didn't say it on the phone, he could guess how things had unfolded. Auntie must have gone to demand the compensation for my parents' death again. His stepmother refused, they argued, and Lin Quan must have helped his mother and beat up his aunt. This little brat, wait until I come back, I'll teach you a lesson. Not giving the money is one thing, but to dare to lay hands on someone? What kind of people are in this family? He hadn't planned to ask for this money anymore, he couldn't even spend all his own money. But now he had to, just throwing it to beggars on the roadside would be better than giving it to them Wang Xiaomei, didn't I give you a lot of money? Didn't I tell you an auntie to reveal a little? How could she still go after that money? Brother, if you don't say anything, how can I? Wang Li asked grievously. Wasn't I afraid auntie would worry that I was up to no good outside? Now that I, a girl, suddenly have so much money, I'm afraid my mom would suspect I'm not studying well and have hooked up with a rich man. Lin Dong was left speechless by Wang Li's words. All right, I'll be back soon. I'll definitely be there before dawn. You must watch over Wang Chao and don't let him cause any trouble. Wang Chao, his cousin, was a mischievous character. If he went to find Lin Quan, Lin Dong had no idea what they would do. Hmm, hurry up then. Lin Dong hung up on Wang Li and immediately called Wei Yong and the others to come pick him up. The Bugatti Veyron was not suitable for their small county town, its chassis was too low, so they would have to go back in a big car after making the call, Lin Dong looked at Han Shir Yun still showering in the bathroom and didn't bother to notify her, just went downstairs. Midway through, Lin Dong sent a message to Han Shir Yun, saying that he had something urgent to attend to and had to return home, asking her to stay here for the night. After sending the message, Lin Dong thought for a moment and added another message. Han classmate, I really have something urgent. Absolutely not escaping from the situation, and absolutely not incapable. I'll prove it to you when I come back. If Han Shi Yun were to misunderstand him as incapable in that aspect, it would be the greatest insult to his character. But could she believe it? Probably not. If it were her, she wouldn't believe it either. Oh no, his reputation in this life was ruined. But now wasn't the time to consider these things. It was better to deal with the matter first before anything else Lin Dong didn't wait long at the gate of Jiangnan International Mansion before Wei Yong and Li Guobing arrived in a Mercedes. After getting in the car, Lin Dong gave Wei Yong a coordinate and asked him to navigate directly. Lin Dong's home was also in Jiangnan province, but it was a remote county town, about 5 or 600 kilometers away from Jiangnan. If they set off now, they should arrive in the morning. Han Shi Yun spent more than half an hour in the bathroom, twisting and turning, knowing that she was about to face one of the most important events in her life. When she came out of the bathroom, Han Shi Yun was only wrapped in a towel, her hair wet, revealing her figure vividly, like a painting of a beautiful woman after bathing, extremely enticing, enough to make any hot-blooded man's blood boil. Unfortunately, Lin Dong had already left, so he couldn't see this painting of a beautiful woman after bathing. Han Shi Yun didn't see Lin Dong when she came out, thinking that Lin Dong had gone upstairs, so she sat on the sofa and waited for him after waiting for a while without seeing Lin Dong come out, she felt bored. She picked up her phone and found two messages from Lin Dong. After reading Lin Dong's messages, Han Shi Yun was a little dazed, then burst out laughing. Lin Dong actually fled in the face of danger? Something's wrong at home? Who would believe that? What time is it now? Sure enough, he wasn't just any man. Bah! He speaks as if I'm some casual woman, I'm still a virgin. I just met someone I like and bravely pursued my own happiness. Since Lin Dong had left, Han Shi Yun relaxed and began to move around casually, observing the house she was in. Just now, she was too nervous to notice, but now that she had relaxed, she realized how luxurious the house she was in was. 
She had never seen such a luxurious house, not even on the internet. Standing in front of the huge floor-to-ceiling windows, looking at the entire night view of the river, Han Shiryun felt like she was in a dream after watching the night view for a while, Han Shiryun took several pictures of the beautiful scenery with her phone, then went upstairs to the 28th floor. There was even a private swimming pool here? Above the pool was transparent glass, through which the starry sky could be seen, with stars twinkling. Imagining herself lying in the pool, looking at the stars, what a pleasure it would be. Just thinking about it made her do it. Han Shiryun picked up an air cushion from the poolside and put it in the water, then lay down on it, letting the air cushion slowly float to the center of the pool as she lay there looking at the stars. It would be even more perfect if Lin Dong were by her side, holding her, and they could have a couple of glasses of wine. Han Shiryun looked down at her body wrapped in a towel and simply took the towel off. How could Lin Dong bear to leave such a tempting body? He's really a boring guy on the other hand, Lin Dong was rushing to his aunt's house. His aunt being injured was a big deal. Although it wasn't very serious, he still felt uncomfortable, especially since it was because of his compensation. By the time Lin Dong arrived in Xuching, it was already past 6 in the morning. He had slept for a while in the second half of the night, while Wei Yong and Li Guobing took turns driving. When they arrived in Xuching, Lin Dong drove himself, as Wei Yong and Li Guobing were not familiar with the road conditions, and he could drive much faster on his own. When they arrived downstairs at his aunt's house, Lin Dong asked Wei Yong and Li Guobing to wait in the car while he went up alone. It was his cousin Wang Li who opened the door, as Lin Dong had called Wang Li when he arrived in Xucheng. Brother, come in quickly. What happened? How's auntie? And Wang Chao? Lin Dong asked. They're all at home. My dad is at home watching Wang Chao, afraid he'll go find that Lin Quan when Lin Dong entered, he saw his uncle Wang Yangfu sitting on the sofa watching TV. Uncle, I'm here. Lin Dong called out. Xiao Dong is here. Go see your aunt quickly. He's already an adult, but still causing trouble with others. Now he's gotten himself in trouble and can't get out of bed. Wang Yangfu said. Lin Dong's aunt's husband, Wang Yangfu, was a junior clerk, a government employee. He was relatively reliable in his work and calm in handling things. Although he wasn't particularly good to Lin Dong, at least Lin Dong hadn't felt any hostility during the two years he had lived here. Can't get out of bed? Didn't Wang Li say that auntie would be fine after resting for a few days? It seemed more serious now. Lin Dong quickly went to his aunt's room and saw her lying in bed asleep. Without disturbing her, Lin Dong gently closed the door and stepped back out. He came to the living room and sat down with his uncle and cousin Wang Li. Uncle, what's going on exactly? Lin Dong asked. Wang Yangfu recounted the whole story to Lin Dong. It was basically very similar to what Lin Dong had thought. When Lin Dong's parents had an accident, there was a compensation of nearly 2 million. At that time, Lin Dong was not yet 10 years old, so this money would definitely need to be managed by his new guardian. In the end, Lin Dong chose to follow his second uncle Lin Guobang, but there were differences regarding this compensation. Lin Guobang repeatedly emphasized that this money would be given to Lin Dong when he turned 18. However, Lin Dong's aunt and elder aunt didn't quite believe it. In the end, they drafted an agreement which has been kept by Lin Dong's aunt ever since. Later, after Lin Guobang received the money, Lin Dong's days became difficult. It wasn't until Lin Dong went to high school and moved to his aunt's house that his life improved somewhat. Now, seeing Lin Dong at the age of 21, on the verge of graduating from college, Lin Guobang shows no intention of withdrawing the money yesterday, Lin Dong's aunt, Lu Yenmei, took the agreement to Lin Dong's second uncle, Lin Guobang, hoping to retrieve the money for Lin Dong. Otherwise, she threatened to sue him. As a result, she got into a dispute with Lin Dong's second aunt, Zhang Guifang. When Lin Quan returned and saw this, he helped Zhang Guifang push Lu Yenmei twice, causing her to fall and injure her waist. Lu Yenmei already had a weak waist, and being pushed by Lin Quan exacerbated the injury. She'll probably need to rest for half a month. Wang Chao. Lin Dong inquired. He woke up this morning clamoring to seek revenge on Lin Quan for his mother. I stopped him from going and now he's locked himself in the room, sulking. Wang Yangfu replied. Uncle, I will handle this matter properly, rest assured, I will definitely give aunt an explanation. Dong, everything must be reasoned out if necessary, we will use the legal weapon to protect ourselves. Never act impulsively. I understand, uncle. I'll go check on Xiao Chao. Lin Dong walked to Wang Chao's bedroom. This used to be his bedroom. 
Because Ann's house is a three-bedroom apartment, he lived here for two years, sharing a room with Wang Chao, and their relationship was still very good. Lin Dong arrived at his cousin Wang Chao's bedroom and pushed the door hard, but there was no response. It was locked from the inside. Knock, knock. He knocked twice and said, Chao, it's me. Open the door. After a while, he heard the locked door being unlocked, but it didn't open. Lin Dong pushed the door and entered, only to see Wang Chao sitting angrily on the bed. Wang Chao is 16 this year, studying in the first year of high school in Xucheng. In order for him to attend a better high school, his father, Wang Yangfu, had gone to great lengths. At this age, he's in a rebellious phase. Learning that his mother had been assaulted, he must be eager for revenge now being held back at home by his father, naturally, he's very unhappy. Chao, what's wrong? Tell me. Lin Dong walked over and patted Wang Chao's shoulder, asking. Brother Lin Dong. That Lin Quan dared to hit my mom. I want to go kill him, but my dad won't let me. He's being a coward himself and wants me to be one too. Wang Chao said fiercely. Lin Dong slapped Wang Chao on the back of his head and said, What are you talking about, you brat? How can you speak ill of your own father? It's true. Wang Chao retorted. Your father isn't being cowardly, he's being rational. If he gets into trouble and goes to jail, what will happen to your sister and your mother? Your aunt's waist is already bad, she can't do heavy work. Your father has been supporting this family all along, he's already tired enough, and yet you still speak ill of him. Then why can't he go, but I can. He won't let me go either. Don't talk about killing people every day if something happens to you, your mother will be even more miserable than if she died. This situation is because of me, so leave it to me. I promise to make you feel better. Really? Wang Chao asked. Of course it's true. Just watch me. After your aunt's waist is healed, we'll go together to help her vent her anger. Okay, brother Lin Dong. I'll listen to you. Lin Dong took Wang Chao out, and they sat together in the living room while Wang Li went to prepare breakfast. In the living room, Lin Dong told Wang Yangfu, his uncle, about his idea of taking Ant to Jiangqing for treatment. After some consideration, Wang Yangfu agreed and called his boss to ask for leave. He had wanted to take Lu Yenmei to a big hospital in Jiangqing long ago, but Lu Yenmei kept postponing it. Actually, Lu Yenmei didn't want to spend too much money. After all, the family relied solely on Wang Yangfu's income, and expenses were already high. Shortly after, Lu Yenmei woke up Lin Dong hurried in and asked, Auntie, how are you feeling? Shadong? Why are you back? Lu Yenmei asked. Auntie, such a big thing happened. How could I not come back? Lin Dong replied. It's actually not a big deal, it's just my old waist acting up again. A few days of rest will do. Auntie, why did you go to Lin Wabang again for money? Don't you know what kind of person he is? But that's the compensation left by your parents. You're about to graduate from college, and this money is for you to get married. How can we not get it back? Besides, we have the agreement we signed back then. If necessary, we can sue him. Lu Yenmei said. Okay, let's talk about this later. The most important thing now is to get your waist injury treated. I've already arranged for us to go to the hospital in Jiangcheng. We'll set off later. Go to Jiangcheng? I won't go. I actually don't have a big problem. Just a few days of rest will do. Plus, it's an old problem, going there would be pointless Lu Yenmei refused. At this moment, however, Lu Yenmei was actually thinking. How much money would it cost to get treatment in Jiangcheng? This family was not wealthy to begin with. It was basically supported by Wang Yangfu alone. With two children now, one in college and one in high school, Lin Dong's tuition was also paid jointly by her and Lin Dong's elder aunt. There was hardly any savings in the family. If she spent money on her own treatment, it would only make things more difficult for the family. Her husband, Wang Yangfu, had also suggested several times before that she go to a big city hospital for treatment, but she had always refused. This time would naturally be no different. Auntie, I know you're worried about spending money. Don't worry, I'm earning money now. Let's get your illness treated first, and you can enjoy life later. Lin Dong persuaded. You, a college student, earning money? Let me tell you, Xiao Dong, you must study hard after you graduate, find a decent job. Don't get involved in any shady business. Otherwise, 
Auntie, I really haven't done anything wrong. You've known me since I was young, haven't you? Lin Dong said with a bitter smile. The reason he hadn't told Auntie about his wealth was because he was afraid she'd get the wrong idea. He had originally planned to gradually reveal it through his cousin Wang Li, but even Wang Li didn't dare to speak up. Now, there was no choice but to be honest. However, Liu Yenmei obviously didn't believe him. No matter how much Lin Dong tried to persuade her, she refused to go to Jiangcheng for treatment. Even the persuasion from Wang Yangfu and Wang Li together was of no use. Lin Dong was at his wit's end. He could only say to Liu Yenmei, Auntie, my car is downstairs. If you don't believe me, you can go down and take a look? Finally, with the help of several people, Liu Yenmei came downstairs and saw the Mercedes-Benz G-Class Lin Dong drove Liu Yenmei, Wang Yangfu, and Wang Chao all widened their eyes, looking at the luxurious Mercedes-Benz G-Class in front of them, too shocked to speak. Wang Li had seen Lin Dong's $80 million car before, so this $3 million Mercedes-Benz naturally didn't impress her. Besides, she still had the 1 billion Lin Dong gave her last time lying in her bank account. If she mentioned it, she could probably shock the three of them. As a public servant, Wang Yangfu naturally had some knowledge. This Mercedes-Benz G-Class looked expensive at first glance, and it should cost at least a few million. Where did Lin Dong get so much money to buy such a good car? It seemed this kid had made a name for himself. Lin Dong was also happy that he had made a name for himself, after all, he considered himself half a son. During the two years he lived in his own home, he believed he hadn't treated Lin Dong unfairly at Al as a durable model of Benz, the G-Class was definitely the dream of most men. Wang Chao was dumbfounded. He had always dreamed of owning such a luxury car. So domineering. So cool. If he drove this to school, how many classmates would envy him? But this belonged to his brother Lin Dong, and he would definitely have a chance to drive it in the future. Xiao Dong. Is this your car? Lu Yenmei came to her senses and asked. Yeah. Auntie, this is my car. I promise, I absolutely haven't done anything illegal. I earned all of this myself, Lin Dong said. You, a college student, how could you earn so much money? Lu Yenmei still didn't quite believe it. Auntie, I'll explain it to you slowly later. Get in the car first, let's go get your illness treated. Since Lin Dong said so, Lu Yenmei no longer insisted. In her eyes, Lin Dong was like her own eldest son. Since her son had made achievements, it was only natural for her to enjoy the benefits Lin Dong and Wang Yangfu helped Liu Yenmei into the car. Wei Yong and Li Guabing had been told in advance to find a hotel to rest in. After all, the two of them hadn't slept much all night. Lin Dong planned to drive Auntie and them to Jiangcheng himself. Get the illness treated first, and then come back to settle accounts with Lin Guabang and that Lin Quan. Lin Dong drove the car. Wang Chao sat in the front passenger seat, looking particularly excited. Liu Yenmei and the other two sat in the back seat. The more than 3 million luxury car indeed had its value. If it were an ordinary car, someone like Liu Yenmei with a waist injury would probably feel very uncomfortable sitting in it. But sitting in this G-Class, she didn't feel any bumps, it was very smooth and comfortable. During the journey, Lin Dong called Liu Chen and asked him to inform Jiangcheng First Hospital. At 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Lin Dong and his group arrived at the gate of Jiangcheng First Hospital. The director of the hospital, Lu Chuan, had been waiting for a long time. He didn't dare to neglect Wei Jia's instructions. Mr. Lin, we meet again. The director of Jiangcheng First Hospital, Lu Chuan, saw Lin Dong get out of the car and hurried forward to say, Director Lu, I have to trouble you again this time. Lin Dong also politely said, Mr. Lin, where's the trouble in doing our duty? Lu Chuan said politely. The two exchanged pleasantries. Then it was time for the expert consultation. The surgery was scheduled directly for 4 o'clock in the afternoon. During the process, Lin Dong also went to see Xiao Pujuan and told him to rest well. After the surgery, it was almost 5 o'clock. Originally, the hospital had arranged the best ward for Liu Yenmei, but she didn't want to stay in the hospital anymore. Lin Dong could only take her back to Jiangnan International Mansion. Han Shiryun should have left by now, right? If she hadn't left, it would be hard to say. Back at Jiangnan International Mansion, Han Shiryun had already left. Lin Dong breathed a sigh of relief. He called the Golden Leaf Hotel and ordered some food to be sent to Jiangnan International Mansion. Auntie was injured and not suitable for running around, so it was better to have it sent directly to where they were staying. 
The Golden Leaf Hotel, an eight-star hotel, didn't deliver takeout, but the chairman's request had to be fulfilled, unless they didn't want to do it anymore. Liu Yanmei's family entered Jiangnan International Mansion and were amazed once again. They couldn't figure out where Lin Dong, a third-year college student, had gotten so much money from? In a big city like Jiangcheng, how much would a house like this cost? Several million? Or tens of millions? They didn't dare to think about it it was unbelievable that one day they could live in such a luxurious house. Wang Chao was jumping up and down excitedly. He was not polite about Lin Dong's house at all. He and Lin Dong had lived in the same room for two years, and as soon as he went upstairs, he jumped into the swimming pool to take a bath. Auntie, Auntie's father, just stay here and rest well, treat this place as your own home, Lin Dong said to Liu Yanmei and Wang Yangfu. Xiaodong, did you buy this house? Liu Yanmei asked. Yeah. Tell Auntie honestly, where did you get so much money from? Auntie, my classmates, and I set up a company and made some money, Lin Dong replied. Really? Auntie, I really haven't done anything illegal, believe me. Lin Dong said helplessly. But. Liu Yanmei wanted to say something else, but was interrupted by Wang Yangfu. All right, Xiao Dong is not a child anymore. He's grown up and has his own judgment. I believe in Xiao Dong, Wang Yangfu interjected. Upon hearing her husband's words, Liu Yanmei ceased her inquiries. Aunt, uncle, now that you are aware of my situation, I hope you can relocate to Jiangcheng. This way, Xiao Chao can receive a better education while attending school here, she expressed. Liu Yanmei and her husband exchanged glances, both feeling intrigued. Wang Chao often mingles with various social circles in Xuqing, completely unchecked, and lacks the inclination to study. Wang Yangfu's tireless efforts for several days secured Wang Chao's enrollment in high school, incurring not only indebtedness but also considerable expenditure. Moving to Jiangcheng might provide a fresh environment, potentially redirecting his focus. Moreover, the educational atmosphere here surpasses that of Xuqing's provincial confines. Their primary concern now lies with their youngest son Xiaodong, Ant understands your current achievements, but we have lived in Xuqing for decades. Furthermore, your uncle's job is there. Moving here would entail a significant adjustment, she articulated. Ant, your presence suffices. You needn't undertake anything strenuous. If you find yourselves idle, I can arrange some light tasks for you, facilitating Xiao Chao's care. What do you think? Lin Dong proposed. Mom, Dad, you should listen to Lin Dong. If Xiao Chao continues lingering at home like this, he'll be thoroughly influenced by those people. Even if you don't consider yourselves, you must think of Xiao Chao. Wang Li chimed in. Let's discuss this further, Liu Yanmei hesitated. Very well. However, I truly hope you'll come. You've done so much for me, it's time for me to repay you. Besides, I own a hotel now and I need trustworthy individuals to oversee it. I'd like you both to help, he revealed. You own a hotel? Yes. Currently, it's managed by hired individuals, but as I also have to attend school, I lack the time for oversight so, I hope you can come and prevent any malfeasance, Lin Dong explained. Lin Dong didn't actually care whether the hotel made a profit, the more losses, the better, as it would accrue him more wealth points. He only expressed this to encourage his aunt and uncle to move in. He also intended to persuade his eldest aunt's family to join them. Lin Dong was generous to those who treated him well and equally firm towards those who didn't, much like his second uncle, Lin Guabang. At this point, Lin Dong's phone rang. It was the delivery from Golden Leaf Hotel. Lin Dong called the management to allow the delivery and requested them to bring it in. For landlords like him, the property management's principle was to accommodate and avoid offending them if possible. Soon, the doorbell rang. Lin Dong went to open the door. More than ten well-groomed waiters entered, each carrying a tray witnessing this scene, Liu Yanmei and Wang Yangfu were astounded, today's experiences were overwhelming. The affluent truly lived in such luxury. A table full of top-notch delicacies lay before them, tantalizing their senses of sight and smell. Lin Dong went upstairs to call Wang Chao down for dinner, who was still having a blast in the swimming pool. Lin Dong, can I come here to swim often in the future? Wang Chao asked as he emerged from the pool. If you can convince your parents to move to Jiangcheng, you can live here, which includes swimming whenever you like. Lin Dong replied with a smile. Really? Wang Chao exclaimed. When have I ever lied to you? Okay, I'll definitely persuade them. Then I can swim here every day. The meal left Liu Yanmei's family wanting more. 
It's so delicious. I've never eaten anything this good in my half century of life. Aunt, this is the food from my hotel. If you come to help me there, you can have these every day. Lin Dong tempted mom. Let's move here. I want to study here. Wang Chao added. The thought of daily indulgence in such delectable cuisine and swimming filled him with reluctance to return home. Liu Yanmei and Wang Yangfu exchanged glances. Very well. We'll move here. Good. Tomorrow I'll go arrange for Xiao Chao to enroll in school. Brother. Can we delay it for a few days? Wang Chao asked. No. Liu Yanmei, Wang Yangfu, and Wang Li answered simultaneously. The next day, Lin Dong called Liu Xiaoxiao to arrange for Wang Chao's enrollment, selecting the high school she attended. Unfortunately, despite Lin Dong's wealth, his influence had not yet been established. His name merely circulated within SCC and Tea Party circles. Ordinary people didn't recognize him, let alone trust him. As the second miss of the Liu family, this matter was a breeze for Liu Xiaoxiao. In just a few minutes, Lin Dong was informed that he could take Wang Chao to enroll Lin Dong drove Wang Chao straight to Jiangcheng No. 1 High School Jiangcheng No. 1 High School was renowned in Jiangnan Province as an elite academy. Although private, it boasted a formidable faculty and received backing from the prestigious Liu family, enjoying a distinguished reputation throughout the province. Students who studied there were either top performers, enjoying full scholarships covering tuition, accommodation, and living expenses, or they hailed from affluent backgrounds. Upon arriving at the school, Lin Dong found Lu Xiaoxiao waiting. At first sight of Lu Xiaoxiao, Lin Dong was stunned, hardly believing his eyes. Just the night before, Lu Xiaoxiao still sported a girlish appearance, but today, she was transformed. The explosion of hair had been replaced by two ponytails, large earrings were discarded, and the heavy makeup was gone. Wearing a school uniform skirt, she stood before Lin Dong as a perfect little Lolita. Lulu, 17 this year, is currently attending her junior year at Jiangcheng High School however, due to her petite stature, she appears to be like a 15 or 16 year old girl. In fact, not only Lin Dong, but even Lulu's parents, grandfather, and her brother, Lu Ken, can hardly recognize her in this attire. They even suspected at one point if something had happened to Lulu, as not only her appearance changed, but even her usual habit of foul language began to slowly change. Lu Ken has asked Lulu several times, but to no avail. Naturally, Lulu wouldn't tell them that it was Lin Dong who prompted her change, hence her transformation. As for the school's teachers and students, it goes without saying. The once notorious troublemaker from the Lu family suddenly turned into a well-behaved girl, astonishing all the teachers and students in the school. Lin Dong? How's this? Don't you recognize me? Lulu reached out a hand and waved it in front of Lin Dong only then did Lin Dong come to his senses, saying, indeed, indeed. The change is quite substantial. Some can hardly recognize you anymore, but it's good, this is how a student should be. All right. I'll listen to you, Lin Dong Ge, from now on. Lulu stepped forward, embracing Lin Dong's arm, smiling. Fortunately, it was class time now, otherwise, if the students going to school saw the notorious troublemaker Lulu being so intimate with a man, it's hard to say how many people's eyes would be shocked. As Wang Chao saw Lulu in that instant, it was as if his whole soul had been struck. Heart racing. Blood rushing. Every organ in his body seemed to be operating at an accelerated pace. This was something he had never encountered in his 16 years. In a daze, he suddenly saw Lulu, a girl of about the same age, so outstanding, and he was simply amazed. In just that moment, he was captivated by Lulu however, seeing Lulu being so intimate with Lin Dong, he quickly hid these thoughts. Lulu. Let me introduce you, this is my cousin, Wang Chao. Wang Chao. This is Lulu, uh, my good friend's sister. Lin Dong introduced them to each other. Hello. I'm Lulu. Lulu, with one hand holding Lin Dong's arm, extended the other hand towards Wang Chao. Ah. Hello. I, I am Wang Chao. Wang Chao stuttered a bit. Then he quickly reached out his hand and shook hands with Lulu. Just the touch of their palms made Wang Chao's face flush. Lulu didn't notice anything wrong with Wang Chao, she just shook his hand and let go, her thoughts mostly on Lin Dong. Lin Dong heard Wang Chao's stuttering voice and turned to look at him. Noticing something amiss with the boy's flushed face and stuttering speech, he wondered if he was smitten. 
Looking at Lulu again, in her short skirt uniform, delicate face, exuding a lively youthful vibe, she was completely different from the Lulu at the luxurious sands the other night indeed, she had a fatal attraction to a boy like Wang Chao, who was in such a confused state. It's better to find some time to have a good chat with this kid. Lulu isn't someone ordinary, he should advise him to get a grip early on. So as not to end up with scars all over himself in the end. Ah, first love. Wasn't his own four-year-long first love eventually ending up with him being scarred all over? Lin Dong Ge, I've already informed the school, just bring your cousin in for enrollment procedures. Lulu said. Thank you, Lulu. Lin Dong said politely. Lin Dong Ge, you're not allowed to be so polite with me in the future. Lulu pouted, a little annoyed. Uh, okay, okay. Lin Dong ruffled Lulu's hair with his other hand. All right. Let's go. Lin Dong Ge. Lulu walked ahead with Lin Dong, enjoying his indulgent behavior Wang Chao silently followed behind. Lulu led Lin Dong directly to the logistics department of Jiangcheng High School, and in less than 10 minutes, all the procedures were completed. Wang Chao was taken by the logistics staff to his class. And Lulu followed Lin Dong all the way to the school gate. Lulu, go to class. Lin Dong Ge, when are you coming to my house? Lulu asked reluctantly. In a while. I'm a bit busy now. I'll come after I'm done. Lin Dong thought for a moment and said. Okay. You must come after you're done. Yeah, definitely. Then I'll go to class now. Goodbye, Lin Dong Ge. Goodbye. Study hard. Got it. After saying this, Lulu walked into the school, but she kept looking back three times. Sitting back in the car, Lin Dong thought about Lulu's recent behavior, feeling increasingly uneasy. Could it be that this girl has developed feelings for me? Very likely. Otherwise, why would she change her attire just because I asked, and she was so obedient about it? Considering she even ignored her own family's words what to do. Although I'm handsome, strong, rich, and have charisma. All right. Maybe that day when I saved her in her most dangerous and desperate moment, I left a deep impression on her. Maybe it'll pass after a while? In the future, I should try to avoid contact with her as much as possible. Kyoto. Within a tranquil quadrangle courtyard. An elder and a young man are playing chess. The elder appears to be about 70 or 80 years old. Although advanced in age, he possesses snowy hair and a youthful countenance, exuding vitality without a trace of senility. Though referred to as a young man, the latter must be at least 30 years old, yet compared to the elder, he can only be deemed youthful. Sure Dao, your chess skills have improved greatly. The elder said with a hearty smile Zhou Grandpa, compared to you, Sure Dao's chess skills still have a long way to go. Zhao Sure Dao humbly replied. The young man is none other than Kyoto's prominent figure, Zhao Sure Dao. The name Zhao Sure Dao is not only renowned among the younger generation, but even among the elderly, he stands out as an exceptional individual. Sure Dao, in chess as in life, one must know when to advance and when to retreat. Lately, I sense some hesitation in you. The elder remarked. Joe Grandpa, you're perceptive. Sure Dao does feel somewhat lost lately. I understand. It seems that the ten-year pact between you three is nearing its end, isn't it? That girl from the Morong family left ten years ago and is about to return. Joe Grandpa, our brotherhood was once strong but it's regrettable how things escalated to this point over a woman. Sure Dao is unsure if it's right or wrong. A fair maiden, a virtuous gentleman, ancient times have seen short-lived spring nights, hence kings neglecting their morning court moreover, that girl from the Morong family is indeed worthy of the description unrivaled beauty. You need not dwell on this matter, following your heart is what matters most. Yes, Joe Grandpa, Sure Dao will remember. At this moment, Zhao Sure Dao's phone rang. It was Qin Zheng calling, wanting to meet him. Qin Zheng had just finished dealing with matters in Jiangbei province and returned to Kyoto. Zhao Shirdao had heard of Qin Zheng's exploits in Jiangcheng, but rumors are just rumors. It's better to hear what Qin Zheng has to say firsthand about what transpired there. Coincidentally, Qin Zheng returned after wrapping up affairs in Jiangbei, and Zhao Shirdao also wanted to know precisely what had occurred in Jiangcheng. Seeing that the ten-year pact with Morong Qingda was coming to an end, and such a formidable figure as Qin Zheng appeared, he had to take it seriously they agreed to meet at the old location, the Great Wall Club. The Great Wall Club is one of Kyoto's three major clubs, a gathering place for the city's elite circles and the headquarters of the Tsi Party. 
Joe Grandpa, sure Dao has some matters to attend to, so I'll take my leave now and visit you another time. Go on. Go on. You youngsters are at the prime of your lives, no need to waste time on an old man like me. Zhao Shi Dao arrived at the Great Wall Club, where everyone who saw him bowed respectfully. Pushing open the top floor private room, Qin Zhang was already waiting inside. See. Qin Zhang stood up and greeted Zhao Shi Dao as soon as he entered. See, what's the matter? Zhao Shi Dao asked after sitting down. See, I went to Jiangbei province for business, and on my way back, I stopped by Jiangcheng to see Zhou Huili and inquire about Mingyue's situation I also wanted to see Mingyue, but I didn't expect to be discovered by Lu Chen. Qin Zhang recounted the incident to Zhao Shi Dao in detail. Oh? Are you saying there's someone around Lin Dong who can fight Chiu Shan to a draw and is incredibly powerful himself? Yes. He could hold my sword with two fingers and shatter it with a snap. Even Uncle Shan says he can't do that. Uncle Shan suspects he's at least at the peak of the tiger list, or even higher. Snap. The cup in Zhao Shirdao's hand shattered into pieces. At the peak of the tiger list, or even higher. He naturally knows what this means. According to what Qin Zhang said, someone around Lin Dong who can achieve this at around 20 years old possesses extraordinary talent, a rarity indeed. In this case, Lin Dong is undoubtedly the heir of a hidden family. And definitely the heir of a first-tier family to think that at this critical moment of the ten-year pact with Xu Gutsong, such a powerful ally would emerge? Jiang Cheng. After dropping off Wang Chao at Jiangcheng High School, Lin Dong arrived at the Golden Leaf Hotel. He called Wei Yong and Li Guobing and Xu Qing to come back on their own. He wasn't going back to Xu Qing temporarily, he wanted to wait until Aunt Lu Yenmei's injuries healed before returning to handle the relocation matters and retrieve his parents' compensation from Lin Guobang. He also needed to see if he could persuade Aunt Lu's family to move to Jiancheng as well. Lin Dong had just closed his eyes for a moment's rest in his office when his phone interrupted him. Answering the call, he heard Yi Hong's voice on the other end. Lin, my friend. You sure have many important matters to attend to, forgetting about your brother Yi for so long. I haven't heard from you in ages. Yi, where do I begin? I've been quite busy lately. Haven't had the chance to catch a breather yet. When I have some free time, I'll prepare a trip to Huqing. Lin Dong replied Yi understands you're busy. Your recent deeds have been spreading throughout the entire SCC, and I never imagined you, Lin Laudi, would hide your abilities so well. You even managed to drive Qin Zhang, one of the Tsi Party's eight great heavenly kings, out of Jiangcheng. Yi Hong said. He truly hadn't expected Lin Dong to be so formidable. Although when selling the Golden Leaf Hotel to Lin Dong, Li Bin had mentioned that Lin Dong was the heir of a hidden family. However, there were distinctions even among heirs of hidden families, some large families had three or four heirs. From the first heir to the third heir and even the fourth heir, the treatment differed at each level originally, they thought Lin Dong was at most a second-tier heir, but the strength he exhibited now was definitely that of a first-tier heir, and even of a super-family. This status was no weaker than that of SCC's three major bosses. He was now extremely grateful for maintaining a good relationship with Lin Dong. Given Lin Dong's current demonstrated capability, it was indeed exceedingly wise to recommend him to SCC. With Lin Dong's reputation spreading, he has already gained the approval of the boss, marking this as the final piece of the puzzle for him to take over the entire Yi family. Please, don't flatter me, brother Yi. Lin Dong modestly replied. This isn't mere flattery. The ability to stand up to Qin Zhang is a rare quality within SCC, let alone escorting him back north in defeat. Oh, by the way, are you currently in Jiancheng? Someone wishes to meet you. Who? Lin Dong inquired. You'll find out when you meet them. Very well, I have been in Jiancheng during this period we'll contact you once we've confirmed the timing. After hanging up the phone, Lin Dong began to ponder. As his prowess gradually becomes evident, he also begins to interact with some truly influential figures. Yet, he feels he isn't strong enough, his influence isn't established, and his capabilities are still lacking. He must find ways to spend more money. Why has Xuanjia been gone for so long without any news? Does she not know how to spend money? Sigh. Lin Dong never imagined he would one day be troubled by how to spend money. In the afternoon, Lin Dong contacted the salesperson, Chui Jia, from the Jiangnan International Mansion, inquiring about the availability of houses. He planned to purchase one for his aunt and another for his older cousin, then settle them in at the Golden Leaf Hotel to work. 
Even if they're not skilled, arranging some leisurely jobs would suffice to cover their expenses for the year, allowing them to establish themselves in Jiangqing Chui Jia was naturally ecstatic, having recently earned millions from Lin Dong, a figure she couldn't have imagined before. And now, another purchase? Indeed, he's a magnate. In high spirits, Lin Dong and Chui Jia went to inspect the houses together. His arrival once again stirred painful memories for several other saleswomen. They remembered how Lin Dong had stood in the lobby for several minutes without anyone attending to him, only for Chui Jia, the newcomer, to reap the benefits. That was a commission worth millions. The thought made them ache with regret, unable to breathe. This time, upon seeing Lin Dong, several saleswomen rushed up eagerly. Sir! Is there anything you need? Sir! Are you looking to buy a house? I can accompany you to view any time. Sir! Here's my business card. Feel free to contact me whenever you need assistance. Anytime. Ahem. Sorry, ladies. I've already made arrangements with Miss Chui. Lin Dong squeezed out of the crowd after speaking at that moment, Chui Jia appeared with the keys. Mr. Lin. I've got the keys. Shall we go view the houses? Please, after you. The two departed together, leaving the lobby buzzing with chatter. That little minx, Chui Jia, must have slept with someone. Absolutely. Otherwise, how could she sell such expensive houses for him? Usually, she seems so innocent, turns out she's a little slut. Disgusting. But beneath their words, envy and jealousy were evident. The first building was sold out, so Lin Dong casually glanced at the second and third buildings before purchasing a similar unit in each, valued at around a hundred million each. Upon returning to the lobby, Lin Dong paid the 10% deposit and left, stating he would return later to complete the formalities. Another 2 billion in sales. Combined with the previous 4 billion, Chui Jia had earned a staggering 6 million in commissions from Lin Dong alone. This achievement not only made other saleswomen envious but even the manager was green with envy. The sales team was kicking themselves in regret. Lin Dong returned to the first building, bringing his aunt, uncle, and cousin Wang Li to view the house. Although his aunt had just undergone surgery the day before, it wasn't anything major. The doctor had advised her to move around more, and she'd be fine in about a week. Lin Dong brought the three of them to the second building. While this house couldn't compare to Lin Dong's own luxurious abode, its decorations were still extremely lavish, considering it was worth a hundred million. Auntie, uncle, what do you think of this house? Lin Dong didn't answer Lu Yenmei's question directly but instead asked. Little Don, this house is exquisite. But we can't afford something like this. Lu Yenmei said. Though they didn't know the price of the house, it was obviously expensive over the years, their family had barely managed to scrape by. Where would they get the money to buy a house? Auntie, I've already bought this house. But the formalities aren't done yet. Later, you can bring your ID cards and complete the paperwork. This house will be yours. Hearing Lin Dong was going to give them the house, Lu Yenmei and Wang Yangfu were astonished. Though they had a feeling when Lin Dong brought them here, actually hearing him say it still surprised them. How can this be, little Dong? It's not easy for you to make some money. We can't accept this house. Lu Yenmei hurriedly protested. Yes, this house is too valuable, we can't accept it. Wang Yangfu added from the side. Only Wang Li stood by the window, enjoying the view. This would be her future home, and she never expected to live in such a mansion one day. Since it's a gift from brother Lin Dong, just accept it. There's no need to refuse, and even if you do, you can't refuse it she hadn't dared to tell her parents about the hundred million yuan in her account. Auntie, uncle. This is my way of showing gratitude to you. If it weren't for staying with you instead of following Lin Guabang and being abused by him, I don't know what kind of person I would have become now. I was quiet and cold-hearted when I first came to your house. It was your warmth that gradually changed me into who I am today. Now that I have the ability, I want to repay you. If you don't accept this house, I'll never be at ease. Lin Dong spoke in a low voice. Indeed, if it weren't for living with Aunt Lu Yenmei's family for two years, allowing him to experience the warmth of a family again, he might have dropped out and taken a different path by now. Upon hearing Lin Dong's words, Lu Yenmei began to sob softly. Little Dong, you've achieved so much now. It's a pity that sister and brother-in-law can't see it if they were here, they would surely be happy for you. Wang Yangfu also felt a sense of emotion as he looked at Lin Dong. 
Initially, when his wife Lu Yanmei brought Lin Dong back home, he wasn't very welcoming. After all, they already had children, and their family wasn't very affluent. Adding another person to support financially wasn't easy. But since his wife insisted, he had no choice but to agree. Although he had some reservations, since Lin Dong had already moved in, he didn't treat him differently. His mindset was, since he's moved in, why treat him differently from his other nephews? If they didn't want him in the family, they shouldn't have let him in. But since he was in, he should be treated equally. It must be said that Wang Yangfu was quite open-minded. Otherwise, under normal circumstances, with his own children and a not-so-affluent family, he wouldn't have let an outsider like Lin Dong move in. Since Lin Dong had spoken to this extent, Lu Yenmei and her husband couldn't refuse anymore Lin Dong took Wang Yangfu to the sales office, while Lu Yenmei and Wang Li stayed in the newly purchased house. It was a luxurious furnished house with everything provided, ready for immediate occupancy. This would be their home from now on. After completing the formalities and successfully paying 100 million, the system's godly points were increased by one point, reaching 81. After settling Aunt Lu Yenmei's family, Lin Dong went to pick up Wang Chao from Jiangcheng High and took him to his new home, then returned to his own. The next day was Sunday. Lin Dong thought Yi Hong would contact him, but he waited all day and heard nothing. In the evening, Lin Dong received a call from Sun Si, asking why he hadn't come to her house this week as agreed. Lin Dong suddenly remembered that he had promised to visit Sun Si this week, but due to Aunt Lu's matters, he had to postpone it. He could only go next time he had time however, in the afternoon, Lin Dong received some good news. Zhao Xian called to say that the crew's basic setup was almost complete, and with the lure of money, Zhao Xian had managed to recruit quite a few talented individuals. Lin Dong instructed her to invest in any good projects she saw fit, not to worry about the money, and to contact Wang Chang as well. There's still 50 billion in investment there, which means 50 godly points at least. Secure that first and then see. He urgently needed to spend money to earn godly points. With more godly points, he could see if he could upgrade the system. He always felt that his physical and mental strength hadn't reached their limits yet. According to Xiao Pujuan, there might still be some reclusive masters out there who could defeat him. I'm already using cheats, but I still can't be invincible. Upgrade quickly for me. Otherwise, what's the use of this system? Another week passed by in this manner, and a new week arrived Monday. Lin Dong attended classes in the morning. In the afternoon, he went to the school's martial arts society. He came here to learn from others. Currently, he relied solely on his physical and mental strength pushed to their limits, which he understood as his power and reflexes. He didn't have any actual techniques. He wanted to learn some striking techniques or various martial arts to see if he could improve his combat effectiveness. Since his failed attempt to randomly add the descending dragon 18 palms, resulting in the deduction of 10 godly points, Lin Dong dared not randomly add skills anymore, especially martial arts skills. Who knew if the name even existed? If not, another 10 godly points would be deducted, leaving him with only a few dozen. Sigh. So broke. He arrived at a large building on campus, which was the dedicated building for student organizations of course, rent was required, and most of the larger student organizations on campus were located here. Lin Dong arrived at the floor belonging to the martial arts society and entered. He found a huge hall filled with people, at least several hundred, mostly men, all sitting cross-legged. Lin Dong was taken aback. Were they practicing? Isn't the martial arts society supposed to focus on martial arts skills? Why are they practicing internal energy? But upon closer inspection, it didn't seem like they were practicing, as most people were still chatting with each other. Lin Dong found a seat at the back. He nudged the guy beside him and asked, Classmate, what are you all doing here? The student glanced at Lin Dong and asked, Aren't you from our martial arts society? Ah, uh, well, I just joined today, so I'm not familiar with it yet. Then you've come at the right time. Today is a lecture by our martial arts society's president, one of the three college goddesses, Shangwan Mingyue Shangwan Mingyue? Isn't she the most mysterious of the three college goddesses? And she's the president of the martial arts society? A woman serving as the president of the martial arts society? Are you kidding me? Are all these men here just freeloaders? Let me ask you, classmate, is Shangwan Mingyue very formidable? Of course. No one in our Jiang University's martial arts society can withstand her for three moves. That fierce? Then, will she be able to get married in the future? Brother, are you joking? President Shangguan is the head of the three college goddesses. 
Those who pursue her can line up all the way to the School of Journalism and Communication. Line up to the School of Journalism and Communication? Isn't that a joke? All the men in Jiang University combined may not even be able to line up to the School of Journalism and Communication. Lin Dong didn't inquire further he sat silently. He wanted to see what kind of lecture the president of the martial arts society could deliver. In haste, a girl with her hair tied in a ponytail, clad in a pristine white training attire, emerged from backstage. She walked gracefully to the rostrum, where, like everyone else, she sat cross-legged on the ground. This must be Shang Wan Mingyue. Although Lin Dong had been studying at Jiang University for three years, during this time, he spent most of his spare moments working part-time. He understood the difficulties faced by his aunt and his elder cousin's family, thus relieving their burden. Moreover, it allowed him to buy small gifts for Jiang Shan and occasionally treat her to some delicacies therefore, he truly didn't know much about Shangguan Mingyue, the most mysterious among the three goddesses. The one he was most familiar with was Suing Xue, as they had always been in the same class. Though Lin Dong was seated at the back, a bit distant from Shangguan Mingyue, his eyesight was exceptionally sharp now. As soon as Shang Wan Mingyue appeared, he could see her clearly. Lin Dong estimated that Shang Wan Mingyue was at least one. 75 meters tall, almost catching up to him. Among the female students, this definitely belonged to the top tier. With a delicate oval face, large eyes, slender eyebrows, a tall nose bridge, and perfectly matched facial features, she appeared immaculate without a trace of makeup. Her natural beauty was undeniable, and her skin was astonishingly flawless, almost translucent, Truly deserving of being the leader of the three goddesses, the most enigmatic presence, as if she possessed a divine aura Lindon looked around at the drooling male students. He wondered if these people were here for martial arts practice or simply for the beauty of Shang Wan Mingyue. At that moment, Shang Wan Mingyue on the rostrum began to speak. Hello, everyone. Her voice was crisp and clear. Hello, President. Hundreds of people chorused. Lindon was startled. This was almost like a leader delivering a speech. Today, I will talk to you about what martial arts is. Martial arts can strengthen the body and prolong life. I have seen a hundred-year-old man who could still move with agility. This is the longevity that martial arts practice bestows upon our bodies. To cultivate martial skills, one must first cultivate the mind. Only by setting one's mindset right can achievements be made in martial arts. Of course, to excel in martial arts, talent is paramount. Some people possess extraordinary talent, reaching heights in three years that ordinary people cannot achieve in a lifetime of practice. Of course, I'm not trying to discourage you. Even if you don't achieve much, at least you can keep fit and healthy. The spirit of martial arts lies in using martial skills to stop conflict, to quell disputes, and to find mutual assistance and unity amidst conflicts and struggles, ultimately aiming for peace. Strength is not for violence, not for indiscriminate killing, nor for engaging in battles for the sake of it, but rather to swiftly stop violence and battles, to protect and guard all living beings. When forced to, we must treat others as we treat ourselves, turning weapons into friends, and harmonizing heaven and earth into one unity. Then followed a barrage of various expressions. Lin Dong couldn't understand a word. What the hell was this all about? I came here to learn techniques, to learn boxing, to learn martial arts. Not to listen to your nonsense. After all that blabbering, it's not a bit helpful to him. Passcode, 72614949. Shangguan Mingyue spoke for nearly half an hour before concluding. The audience below, like Lin Dong, were mostly bewildered. These guys were definitely drawn here by the reputation of the top goddesses of the academy. As for martial arts? Making money was still more reliable in this day and age. Lin Dong truly admired Shangguan Mingyue. Despite speaking to the wrong audience, she could talk for so long, so earnestly. She wasn't an ordinary person. Next came the question and answer session. Anyone could raise questions, and I will answer them on the spot. Shangguan Mingyue, sitting cross-legged on the rostrum, said President Shangguan, I'd like to ask, are there still martial arts masters in this day and age? Aren't they only seen on TV or in movies? A male student stood up and asked. Real-life martial arts masters are different from those in TV dramas. You'll only encounter them after reaching a certain level of martial arts practice. But for now, explaining it to you would be futile, Shangguan Mingyue replied. President Shangguan, can we still reach a high level of martial arts practice? It's difficult. Martial arts isn't something achieved overnight. It requires practice from a young age. 
Even for those with exceptional talent, if they miss the prime time for training, their achievements will be limited. President Shangwan, I've heard that you and the first male god of the academy, President Zhou, are in a romantic relationship. And President Zhou has declared that he won't allow any man to approach you. Can you confirm your relationship with him? A brave male student asked. As soon as he spoke, the entire venue fell silent, everyone waiting to hear Shangwan Mingyue's response. Evidently, everyone was very concerned about this issue. I'm sorry, but I prefer not to answer anything other than questions related to martial arts. If there are no further questions, then I'll proceed to demonstrate some combat techniques. The scene erupted into a cacophony, clearly dissatisfied with Shang Wan Mingyue's answer. At this moment, two people hurriedly entered the hall, one man and one woman. After hastily scanning the venue, they approached Lin Dong. The man bent his knees and knelt beside Lin Dong. Young Master Lin, I was wrong. I shouldn't have offended you. I hope you can forgive me and let me off this time. Can you please help me plead with the Lu family? Huang Junlang knelt beside Lin Dong, pleading earnestly. Ever since he offended Lu Xiaoxiao on Friday night, the next day, all of his parents' properties had been severely affected by the Lu family with the power of the Lu family in Jiangcheng, his family's properties were almost bankrupted in an instant. In the past two days, his parents had tried many connections to no avail. They still didn't know it was because their son offended the second young miss of the Lu family. He didn't dare to tell his parents, or else he didn't know what his parents would do to him. But now, everything he had was gone. His parents went bankrupt, chased by creditors, and now they had almost sold everything valuable in their house, even losing their home. Their current life was worse than that of beggars on the street. His parents' hair turned white overnight, and they even contemplated suicide to end their misery. Thinking it over, judging from Lu Xiaoxiao's respectful attitude towards Lin Dong that night, only Lin Dong could save his family. As long as Lin Dong helped him plead with the Lu family, their crisis could be averted so, he dragged Zhang Shan along to find Lin Dong, promising her that if Lin Dong could intercede for his family and resolve the crisis, he would marry Zhang Shan immediately. Now, saving face was no longer important to him. If he could resolve his family's crisis, he could always change schools, he was still the wealthy Huang. If the crisis couldn't be resolved, his family might face a life even worse than beggars. The scene of Huang Junlang kneeling before Lin Dong upon entering directly aroused the curiosity of many people. They all crowded around, wanting to see what had happened. Oh! Isn't this young Master Huang? Someone recognized Huang Junlang in the hall. Huang Junlang still had some reputation at Jiang University, being the second generation of the rich. Although not the most powerful, he was definitely the most arrogant. Wow! Is that really young Master Huang? He actually knelt in front of everyone? Who is this person? Everyone's attention shifted to Lin Dong, wanting to see who could make young Master Huang kneel publicly being recognized, Huang Junlang felt a burning sensation on his face. He had never been so embarrassed in his life. But there was no other choice, his family's fate was in Lin Dong's hands. Huang Junlang! Have I done anything to you? What's the use of kneeling and pleading with me? Lin Dong stood up leisurely and said, now that everyone was crowding around, Lin Dong had to stand up as well. Young Master Lin, I hope you can help me plead with the Lu family to spare my family. Huang Junlang said. Why would Lu's deal with you because you offended Lu Xiaoxiao? What does that have to do with me? Also, are we on good terms? Why should I plead for you? Lin Dong retorted. Huang Junlang was momentarily at a loss for words. Were they on good terms? He snatched Lin Dong's girlfriend, humiliated Lin Dong, made him cough up blood, and even posted photos of Lin Dong online and in the school group, turning Lin Dong into a joke at the academy how could they be on good terms? It's estimated they had irreconcilable enmity. Zhang Shan looked at Lin Dong in front of her. Since their breakup, Lin Dong seemed to have changed. If someone knew Lin Dong best before, it was definitely her. But now, she found that she didn't understand Lin Dong at all. How could someone's personality change so quickly? And Lin Dong actually had the ability to help Huang Junlang's family? Making Huang Junlang kneel down to apologize? Had he been hiding all along? Was he testing their relationship? It's said that some second generation rich like to disguise themselves as poor boys to find true love. If that's really the case, then what had she done? For a few brand name clothes and handbags, she had actually missed out on a super rich second generation hiding his true identity? 
And this super rich second generation loved her, cared for her, accommodated her, and tolerated her. In that instant, Jiang Shan felt her head spinning. She had actually given up an entire forest for a blade of grass. Huang Junlang pulled Jiang Shan beside him, trying to snap her out of her days. Lin Dong. I was just about to speak, Jiang Shan was interrupted by Lin Dong. Jiang Shan, do you also want to plead for his family? Lin Dong looked at Jiang Shan and asked. Lin Dong, I hope you can help Junlang. Jiang Shan gathered her courage and said. She had no other choice now. The forest had already drifted away from her. If she couldn't grasp this blade of grass that was Huang Junlang, then she truly had nothing left. What do you hope for? As an ex-girlfriend? High school classmate? Or Huang Junlang's current girlfriend? Lin Dong sneered at this moment, the onlookers finally realized. So, Lin Dong was the one who had his girlfriend stolen by Huang Junlang, then was made to cough up blood, and even had his photos posted online and in the school group. Wasn't this just a few days ago? Now, Huang Junlang was kneeling before Lin Dong, begging for help? Asking him to plead? Wasn't this plot twist too fast? Even TV dramas wouldn't dare to play it like this. Lin Dong. Can't you help me even after I've begged you? Please, for the sake of our relationship over the years, help me one more time, please? Jiang Shan suddenly begged in a low voice. Now she could only beg Lin Dong for help. As long as Huang Junlang's family crisis was resolved, she could marry Huang Junlang and live the life of a wealthy lady, which had always been her dream. Even when she was with Lin Dong, she had this dream, but Lin Dong was just too good to her, making her hesitate otherwise, when Huang Junlang came to pursue her, she wouldn't have pushed Lin Dong away. Jiang Shan, you have no right to ask me. Everyone has the right to ask me, but not you. My years of effort are worth less than a few pieces of clothing and a few handbags? I've been wrong about you all these years. I can't help you with your troubles. Goodbye. Lin Dong said and then walked away. But Huang Junlang hugged Lin Dong's legs. Young Master Lin, it's my fault, it's all my fault. Please, help me one more time. You're my family's last hope. Huang Junlang hugged Lin Dong's legs, his nose and tears streaming down. Lin Dong was his last hope. Lin Dong was about to kick Huang Junlang away. There was another commotion at the hall door. Then a figure walked in front, followed by a large crowd entering the hall. Leading the way was the student union president of Jiangnan University, the first male god of Jiangnan University, Zhou Huili, also recognized by everyone as the boyfriend of Shang Wan Ming Yuo. Chairman Zhou has arrived, surely to meet President Shang Wan. What a gathering of the academy's finest. Hurry, let's go see. The crowd around Lin Dong and the others dispersed instantly, rushing over to watch Zhou Huili and Shang Wan Mingyue. With a casual exertion of force, Lin Dong pushed Huang Junlang aside. Disregarding Huang Junlang and Jiang Shan, Lin Dong followed along, curious to witness Shang Wan Mingyue's prowess in action. The recent altercation between Lin Dong and Huang Junlang had no effect on Shang Wan Mingyue. In the hall, among the hundreds of people, only about a few dozen were watching Lin Dong and Huang Junlang while more were gathered near the platform to watch Shang Wan Mingyue's practical demonstration. On stage, Shang Wan Mingyue was engaged in a sparring session with a senior member of the martial arts society in fact, everyone was waiting for this moment, for the opportunity to be in close proximity to the goddess. However, just as Lin Dong was about to confront his opponent, he was the first to rush forward, hoping to get close to the goddess. In combat, physical contact is inevitable. His intentions were not entirely pure. Normally, it would be female members participating, but for some reason today, he wanted to take advantage, unable to resist Shang Wan Mingyue's exquisite beauty. Now that Zhou Huili had arrived, he naturally felt somewhat uneasy. Moreover, Zhou Huili was the president of the student union, rumored to have considerable influence, someone he couldn't afford to offend. Halt! Who told you to leave? The member who was about to leave was stopped by Zhou Huili. Zhou Chairman, I. Smack! Before the member could finish speaking, Joe Huili interrupted with a slap. Smack. Followed swiftly by another asterisk smack. Smack. Smack, asterisk. Joe Huili delivered four or five consecutive slaps. He would have continued, but was stopped by Shang Wan Mingyue. Joe Huili, cease this at once. Shang Wan Mingyue shouted. Miss Mingyue. Qin Xiao instructed me to protect you, not to let any man near you. He dared to defy my words. He deserves it. 
Joe Whiley retorted, delivering a kick to the member's body. The member felt a sharp pain in his abdomen, then his body went light as he flew off the stage. The stage was elevated over a meter from the ground, a fall from there would result in serious injury. Seeing someone flying towards them, the audience below quickly scattered, fearing collateral damage, leaving Lin Dong standing alone. As the member was about to collide with Lin Dong, he extended his hand to catch him, then gently placed him on the ground. Ha! Huh? Zhou Huili didn't hear any screams of pain. He turned to look at the audience and saw the person being rescued. As he caught sight of Lin Dong's face, his pupils contracted, filled with astonishment I sent that Lin Dong? He would never forget the experience at the luxurious Golden Sands that night. In his mind, Lin Dong was an extraordinary figure, one of the eight great figures of the Tea Party, Qin Jin's Qin De Shao, was easily defeated and shamefully returned to the capital, still too afraid to show his face even after so many days. And that person was his alumnus at Jiang University, the one who was currently standing below the stage saving someone. Even Qin De Shao, who had suffered a great loss, dared not return, as for him, a small character, wouldn't he be crushed like an ant? What to do now? Apologize to him? But there are so many people here. If he apologizes, won't the image he has built at Jiang University collapse? Where would he put his face? But if he doesn't apologize, what if the other party blames him? What should he do then? Even Qin De Shao can't be provoked. Let alone him. Forget it. Forget it. What does face matter compared to one's life? Especially in the other's territory as long as he apologizes, this big shot shouldn't bother with a small fry like him. After thinking it through, Zhou Huili took a few steps forward, then jumped off the stage and walked up to Lin Dong. The member who was just kicked off by Zhou Huili was effortlessly pulled aside by Lin Dong, landing among the nearby crowd. Now it was Lin Dong facing Zhou Huili directly. As everyone prepared to watch the drama unfold, to see how Zhou Huili would deal with Lin Dong, Zhou Huili, unexpectedly, made a move that left everyone dumbfounded. Zhou Huili clasped his hands together, bowed to Lin Dong, and said, Young Master Lin, I apologize for my mistake just now. I didn't see you here. Please forgive me for my oversight. Please, be magnanimous, and don't bother with someone insignificant like me. Zhou Huili apologizes to you here. I'm sorry. What? Nanny? What? Everyone waiting for the drama to unfold was dumbfounded even Shangguan Mingyue was momentarily stunned in place. Who is Zhou Huili? He is the chairman of the student union at Jiang University. The number one male god at Jiang University. His family background is said to be even more formidable. The likes of Huang Junlang, a second generation rich, aren't even worthy to shine his shoes. At Jiang University, his words carry weight, even the school would take them seriously. Such a figure actually bowed and apologized to Lin Dong upon seeing him? Just who is Lin Dong? Even if Huang Junlang kneels before him, it would be understandable, but to provoke not just him, but someone of Zhou Huili's caliber? It's terrifying. When did Jiang University produce such a big shot? Even Shangguan Mingyue was astonished. Zhou Huili is Qin Jin's man. As one of the eight titans of the Tea Party, Qin Jin, also known as Qin Dashao, is an esteemed figure even in the illustrious Kyoto for Zhou Huili to catch Qin Jin's eye and be taken under his wing, he is certainly no ordinary individual. It seems that in the few years that Qin Jin has dispatched him to monitor me, apart from Qin Jin himself, he hasn't shown such respect to anyone else. From this perspective, could this person before me be on the same level as Qin Jin? Shangguan Mingyue, in fact, isn't very concerned about the internal affairs of the Tea Party. Otherwise, she would have heard about Qin Jin being recently driven out of Jiang City in a sorry state. Considering this current situation, it can be reasonably inferred that Lin Dong is the one who expelled Qin Jin. As a hidden family, the Shangwan family is now planning to emerge and seek a powerful family to cooperate with, with the Qin family in Kyoto being their target. The Qin family is currently facing stagnation in their development and is in urgent need of external assistance, hence the two parties' mutual agreement and the most solid form of cooperation is through marriage. Therefore, both families intend for Shangguan Mingyue and Qin Jin to be together to maintain this firm partnership. Shangguan Mingyue is very repulsed by such a marriage built on interests, but she has no choice. She's just a girl and lacks the right to choose, only able to accept the arrangement made by the family. The first time Qin Jin saw Shangguan Mingyue, he was amazed, and with the mediation of both families, he directly designated Shangguan Mingyue as his future wife. Fortunately, Shangguan Mingyue is still young and chose to attend university in Jiang City to escape from Qinzhen. 
but she didn't expect Jinjin to actually send someone to monitor her. Lin Dong also didn't expect Zhou Huili to bow and apologize to him. He thought Zhou Huili would make a move against him. He was already prepared, ready to control his strength to avoid causing severe harm after all, they belonged to different factions, SCC and the Tea Party. They even slapped his boss in the face a few days ago. He thought even if Zhou Huili didn't dare to act against him, he would at least say some harsh words, right? Isn't that how it's depicted on television? When do opposing sides bow and apologize to each other right away? How was he supposed to respond to this? In fact, Lin Dong underestimated his own strength. He always felt that his strength was not strong enough, but the strength he displayed now would definitely chill many people. Otherwise, why would Qin Zhen have been silent for so long after suffering such a huge loss? This doesn't befit his status as one of the eight titans of the Tea Party. It's because he felt that even if he came, he might not be able to regain his dignity, which is why he hasn't shown up. Although the Tea Party and SCC are somewhat hostile, it doesn't mean that members of the Tea Party cannot enter SCC-controlled areas or vice versa this is only a matter of face between the top echelons of both sides, at least between the eight titans of the Tea Party and the core members of SCC. When one side's high-ranking member acts, the other side will also send out corresponding personnel to meet them. Ordinary members can go wherever they want without anyone bothering them. If it weren't for Lu Chen's urgent desire to advance to core membership and reverse the decline of the family, he could have pretended not to see. After all, Xinjin's status as one of the eight titans of the Tea Party is not something a senior SCC member like him can compare to. What he wants is to attract the attention of the three big bosses of SCC. Therefore, wise people act in accordance with the situation. Zhou Huili doesn't think there's anything wrong with what he did. Even if it gets out, no one will ridicule him. At most, in the eyes of ordinary people at school who don't know Lin Dong's identity, they might think he's somewhat timid moreover, he's graduating soon anyway, and these ordinary people at school will never reach his level. Zhou Huili bowed 90 degrees to Lin Dong. Not hearing a response from Lin Dong, he didn't dare to rise and could only maintain this posture. At this moment, Lin Dong also came to his senses and said, Senior Zhou, it's better to be low-key. That fellow just now didn't really offend you. Was it necessary to be so heavy-handed? If I hadn't caught him, he would have been seriously injured from the fall. This is Jiang University, not Kyoto. As the saying goes, don't hit a smiling person's face. Zhou Huili's unorthodox move of bowing and apologizing right away made Lin Dong feel a bit embarrassed. There's no deep-seated enmity between them. Yes. Young Master Lin, I remember. Zhou Huili straightened up but his tone remained extremely respectful. Lin Dong felt somewhat bored and turned to leave he had originally wanted to learn some techniques and moves, to control his strength better, but in the end, he learned nothing and ended up being surrounded like a monkey. The people around automatically made way for Lin Dong. They thought there would be an exciting show, but it ended so peacefully. Everyone watching Lin Dong leave felt curious, but more than that, they felt respect. It seems that from today onwards, the position of Jiang University's number one person will change hands. Lin Dong went from an unknown figure to the number one person at Zhang University in just over half a month. The speed of this transformation is simply unbelievable. As Shangguan Mingyue watched Lin Dong's departing figure, she couldn't help but wonder what he was thinking. When Lin Dong passed by Huang Junlang and Zhang Shan, Zhang Shan wanted to say something, but found that she had no connection with Lin Dong anymore. It seemed that anything she said would be feeble and pale seeing Lin Dong leave without causing trouble, Zhou Huili finally breathed a sigh of relief. Ever since that night when he witnessed Lin Dong's strength, Zhou Huili had been under considerable psychological pressure when facing Lin Dong. Someone without any martial arts background cannot understand this kind of pressure, just like ordinary people facing pressure from those above them, it's terrifying. Miss Mingyue. Xin Xiao arranged for me to watch over you, hoping that you will respect yourself. Otherwise, when Xin Xiao comes in person, he won't be as easy to deal with as me. Zhou Huili said before leaving the hall. Zhou Huili, what qualifications do you have to speak of me? Go back and tell Qin Zhang, I haven't married him yet. He has no authority over me now. Shangwan Mingyue said angrily behind Zhou Huili. Zhou Huili left. However, his final conversation with Shangwan Mingyue sparked some speculation among the onlookers in the hall what does it mean? It seems that Zhou Huili is just the one Qin Xiao sent to monitor Shangwan Mingyue? So does Shangwan Mingyue really have someone she's attached to? To be referred to as Qin Xiao by Zhou Huili, one can tell he's quite a remarkable figure. I wonder who is more formidable compared to Lin Dong. 
Now, most of them are thinking, if Lin Dong and Shang Wan Mingyue are involved, it would be exciting for Qin Xiao to come to Jiang University and clash with Lin Dong. But judging from Lin Dong's performance just now, it seems that he's not particularly interested in Shang Wan Mingyue, the leader of the three goddesses of Jiang University. Lin Dong left the building with nowhere to go and no desire to return to the classroom. He came to the small woods beside the playground, watching the younger students sweating profusely on the playground, lost in thought. He pondered over his experiences in the past month and a half, which indeed felt like a dream originally an ordinary person, everything changed because of a system. He didn't know how long had passed when a clear and bright voice sounded beside Lin Dong's ear. Are you Lin Dong? Lin Dong turned his head to look. Isn't this Shang Wan Mingyue? What does she want with him? Nevertheless, he answered, yes. Do you know Qin Zhang? Shang Wan Mingyue asked again. I know him. Are you friends? Enemies. Oh. You seem to be quite extraordinary to become an enemy of Qin Zhang. No wonder Zhou Huili is so afraid of you. You're mistaken. Actually, I'm just an ordinary person. Shang Wan Mingyue didn't dwell on this issue and asked, Do you want to join the martial arts society? I originally wanted to join, but now I don't want to anymore. Why? Because I can't learn anything. What's the point of joining? Lin Dong replied and then asked in return. Upon hearing Lin Dong's response, Shang Wan Mingyue felt somewhat angry. Does Lin Dong look down on the martial arts society just because he looks down on her as the president? Do you think the martial arts society is all about superficial skills? Isn't it true that there's genuine talent? Haven't you said it yourself? Starting martial arts now is already too late, isn't it? Lin Dong, since Zhou Huili is so afraid of you and you're considered an enemy by Qin Zhang, you must be quite capable, right? How about becoming the vice president of the martial arts society? Shang Wan Mingyue invited. Sorry, I'm not interested. Look for someone else. Lin Dong replied. Lin Dong, I am Qin Zhang's designated wife. Since you're enemies with him, don't you want to disgust him a little? Humiliate him? Lin Dong turned to look at Shang Wan Mingyue. Is this girl crazy? What's it to me if you don't want to marry him? Do you want to use me as a pawn and shield? I'm not that foolish. When there's no benefit, I'll end up being the one in trouble I only won by chance. If I really compete with Qin Zhang, the gap will be insurmountable. Lin Dong didn't respond but stood up and left directly. Shang Wan Mingyue was puzzled by Lin Dong's actions. Aren't they enemies? She thought that saying so would surely bring Lin Dong into the martial arts society. By then, she wanted to see if Zhou Huili still dared to intervene. And judging from Zhou Huili's attitude just now, Lin Dong's background is at least not inferior to Qin Zhang's. Even if Qin Zhang came, it would be a fierce competition. Maybe a mutually damaging outcome would be perfect. Seeing Lin Dong about to leave her side, in a moment of urgency, Shang Wan Mingyue directly attacked Lin Dong. In her opinion, Lin Dong must have some strength, and she didn't use her full strength, so Lin Dong should be able to withstand it on the one hand, she wanted to test Lin Dong's strength. On the other hand, she also wanted to prove to Lin Dong that the martial arts society is not just about superficial skills, but there are truly talented individuals. Just as Lin Dong walked past Shang Wan Mingyue, he felt a gust of wind blowing from behind. Is someone attacking him? His senses are so acute now. Due to the suddenness of the incident, Lin Dong's control over his own strength was not very proficient. So the power in his body burst out uncontrollably in an instinctive reaction. With his current strength, the terror unleashed under full explosion was indescribable. Shang Wan Mingyue only felt the breath from Lin Dong suddenly rushing towards her like a stormy rain. She felt like a small boat in the sea, as if she could be swallowed by the waves at any moment. In great shock, Shang Wan Mingyue didn't have time to react a big hand, like iron pliers, grabbed her delicate white neck. A feeling of suffocation came over her, and Shang Wan Mingyue felt like crying. At this moment, Lin Dong also quickly reacted and saw that he was grabbing Shang Wan Mingyue's neck, so he quickly let go. Shang Wan Mingyue covered her neck with both hands, squatting on the ground, coughing violently, tears streaming down her face like a bursting dam. Lin Dong stood there feeling awkward. That moment just now was purely instinctual, right? Who told this girl to attack him without even saying hello? Can I be blamed for this? Probably not. After standing for a while, Lin Dong finally squatted down, gently patting Shang Wan Mingyue's back, trying to make her a little more comfortable. 
A minute or two later, Shang Wan Mingyue finally eased up, no longer coughing. Turning her head to look at Lin Dong, her beautiful oval face and beautiful big eyes were both red. Miss Shang Wan. I didn't mean it, but you attacked me from behind. It was just an instinctive reaction. Lin Dong said awkwardly are you implying it's all my fault? Even if you had killed me just now. Was it my fault for provoking you? Shang Wan Mingyue's voice was now hoarse, no longer clear and bright as before. Isn't that the case? But Lin Dong didn't dare to say such words. No. No. It was my reaction that was too strong. My mistake. My mistake. Lin Dong replied. If it's your mistake, then what do you suggest we do about this? Just now, if you had exerted a little more force, you could have killed me. But I just wanted to tell you that the martial arts society isn't all about showy moves, and I didn't intend to harm you. What do you want to do then? Lin Dong asked. Join the martial arts society as vice president, and you have to agree to one condition from me, Shang Wan Mingyue said. Lin Dong thought for a moment and said, I can join the martial arts society, but agreeing to a condition from you is out of the question would I have to go to my death if you so desire? Don't worry, I won't go against your will. You can choose to do it or not. Even if you don't, I won't say anything. Really? Am um. All right then. But let me make it clear first. I'll do it if I want to, and I won't if I don't. Deal. Shang Wan Mingyue smiled. Lin Dong looked at Shang Wan Mingyue's smile and felt like he might have been tricked. But it was indeed the case just now. With just a little force, such a beautiful woman would have been in mortal danger. It seems he really needs to control his strength as soon as possible. Lin Dong left because the situation here had attracted some attention from fellow students, and he didn't want to be gawked like a monkey again. Shang Wan Mingyue watched Lin Dong leave. Although her face still showed some lingering fear, she couldn't help but reveal a charming smile.